Hello and welcome, listeners, to the first episode of a new podcast that we're doing. This is going to be the Movers Podcast, or to give it its long name, Avatar Online Podcast at the Movers. Uh, it's a new off-topic podcast we're doing, uh, and this first episode we're recording on January 18th, 2015, which conveniently is my birthday. And uh, this first uh, episode will be for the TV show Lost, but uh, before... Obviously, uh, explanations are in order. What exactly is the Movers Podcast? What's it about? We'll explain that after we introduce the people on the podcast. So, myself, uh, I am the main host for this episode, Morgan Airspeed Prime from Avatar The Last Airbender Online.com, which this podcast is for. Joining me first on the podcast is Kelly, Gemini530 from the site. Hi, everyone. Also joining us is Troy, Trojan People from the site. Hello, other people. And finally, Greg, Greg2B from the site. What's up, everyone? Okay, so, what is the Movers Podcast? Uh, Most of you listening to this podcast are probably wondering why this isn't an episode of the Avatar Online Podcast, and that is because, uh, one, Korra is over, and the Avatar fandom, I suppose, is technically on a little bit of a hiatus. We have some comics and stuff like that to look forward to, but for the most part, there's not enough to really warrant doing an Avatar podcast weekly but we still want to do a podcast every week, so we created this idea, the Movers Podcast, which is going to be an off-topic podcast that's going to be every two weeks, while the Avatar Online Podcast also goes to being every two weeks. So uh, in basic terms, what you're going to have is just a weekly kind of switching between one-week Avatar Podcast, next week Movers Podcast, and going back and forth. Specifically, what this podcast is, is basically a TV recommendation TV show recommendation podcast. Every week we're going to bring up a a new TV show, watch the first two episodes, and discuss it as if we're all kind of new to the show. Obviously, the person who chose the show will be more familiar with it, and uh, depending on if we've seen it or not, other people will be. And that's the idea, that right now people are missing a show uh, with Avatar, Korra off the air. So this is an idea to kind of fill in those gaps, give people a list of TV shows to watch. Um, And that's what it is. Uh, We... We think we have good taste as Avatar fans, and so we'll see that uh, come into play here. And uh, obviously we have some rules about the specifics of what uh, TV shows we can choose. First of all, the uh, schedule, I suppose, um, format that we're going to choose in is basically, first up is me, obviously I chose Lost for this week. Kelly, at the end of this show, is going to choose the show for the next podcast, then Troy, then Greg. That order is basically the order in which we joined the podcast in the first place. Um, and, uh, yeah, before we get into explaining the rules for the choice of TV show, I suppose we'll just uh, do a little bit of an introduction on ourselves in terms of our general taste in TV shows, I suppose, to get us started. So, uh, myself, my general taste in TV shows would be a big preference for animation over live action. Uh, there's a few live action shows that I'm going to talk about, and obviously the first one I chose was a live action show. But um, definitely I prefer um, animation over live action for the most part. I'm a little bit picky about uh, the live action shows I choose. Um, and uh, definitely I also like uh, a, a sort of an element of fantasy action to my shows. Not really uh, big on any shows that have kind of any, that are just super mundane or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I like animation, anime, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah. Anime, uh, animation over live action is probably the main thing for me. But uh, Kelly, uh, what about you? What's your general taste in TV shows, I suppose, to give us an introduction to yourself? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. I mean, I tend to be really into um, animation as well. Um, I watched anime for a couple of years, haven't watched it recently, but um, watched it for a while, really enjoyed that. But I also watch live action shows, even more so recently. Um, but like uh, similar to you, I kind of need some sense of you know, action or adventure in it or something. I'm not into dramas, really. I mean, they could have drama in it. I like drama stuff. But, I mean, when it comes to, like, I don't know, Desperate Housewives, I'm like, no. (laughs) No, that's not my kind of thing. I I really like fantasy and fiction kind of stuff. Um, But, I mean, I am kind of picky with shows as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, there are a couple good ones that I've watched that are good. And, you know, I like comedies, too. Like, I love Friends. That's like a little thing here and there. I've seen Friends. I love Friends. So I'm not like totally crazy with the with the fantasy. But those are my general round of stuff I like to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about you, Troy? What's your general uh, taste in TV shows? Yeah, that's interesting with the live action versus animation because there hasn't really been a live action show that I've fallen in love with. So I, I, I definitely prefer 
animation over live action. Uh, as far as that goes, I like shows with, um, I guess, just like dealing with, um, I guess, kind of relationships between people, not necessarily just like, I I want something more than just people getting along that are in a family, like something more about um, like the different world of is going on and stuff, so uh, that's kind of what I like. And uh, Greg, what about you? Um, yeah, I mean, I I like a lot of animation as well, as you guys have said. Um, I was really, really into anime when I was in the college, and I guess um, I still watch it here and there, although I usually do more of, uh, I guess, animated or animation, anime films than normal TV shows these days, but I have been watching a good amount of live action, especially a, a lot of the newer stuff that's come out that's based off of like Marvel and DC characters. Um, I like a lot of those sort of live action shows these days, and I do watch a few dramas, usually not consistency. I usually sort of like watch a couple of episodes and wait a bit and then watch a bit more, so I do watch a fair bit of uh, like drama TV shows, but not much of not much comedy and not much any of like reality TV shows. Those aren't usually my sort of preference. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, basically that's another thing about this uh, thing that because we're all going to be recommending TV shows to each other, we all, you, for the most part, I suppose we have fairly similar taste from what we've seen already. We obviously got together because we like Avatar, but uh, so a lot of the shows we should like similarly. But uh, maybe you will have a few times where we recommend a show where it's completely out of someone's wheelhouse, but they actually really like it. And, uh, Expanding Horizons, I suppose, may be something that this show actually does. But before we get into the first show, uh, let's explain the rules for actually uh, choosing a show. Uh, This is just so that we are not basically reviewing shows that there's not really anything to review for. So the main rule will be just that the show has to have uh, a story to it. It has to uh, have character development in it. Um, So that's the key thing. It has to be like like, like Avatar, basically, that, that's the idea, is that that's a show that has good characters, it has a story. We want to, to discuss something that has both of those. The other one is that it can be animation, anime, or it can be live action, as we said. Uh, movies may be something we'll, we do on special podcasts, but for now we're sticking to TV shows. Uh, another one is just that uh, the TV show can't be too obscure, because obviously the four of us have to be able to watch it, and we're recommending this to listeners, so it has to be readily available, so nothing too crazy like that Um, and then in terms of age rating on the shows we're not going to go for anything like 18 plus rated that sort of stuff we don't want to be discussing like super gore or anything like that here that sort of stuff we we are keeping with this with the fact that we are the idea is that we're recommending this to other avatar fans so we may have some younger listeners so we're going to keep it to basically the highest we're going to go is probably like 16s or something like that on tv shows and uh, yeah that's that's the general uh, gist of the rules and but, uh, yeah, it's probably about time now that we get into uh, the first TV show we're going to do in the podcast. Episode 1 is for Loss, which I chose at the end of Avatar Online Podcast, episode 100. Now, uh, the, the for- basic format of this show, uh, everyone who chooses the show basically hosts the discussion for that show. So I chose Lost, so I'm going to host this one. And I'll start us off with a brief intro to the series, give some facts on it. So Lost uh, originally aired on ABC, the network uh, in America, from 2004 to 2010, across six seasons and 121 episodes, with some additional canon web shorts and one special finale uh, 12-minute epilogue featurette. Um, And yeah, it's a character-focused adventure show with some sci-fi and supernatural elements uh, thrown in. And it basically bases around the survivors of the plane crash of Oceanic Flight 815, which was going from Sydney to L.A., and how these survivors deal with uh, one surviving on an unknown island, uh, first of all, exploring the various various mysteries around this unusual island, and also dealing with the issues uh, that's uh, coming from their lives off the island, and also interacting with their fellow survivors. Um, The showrunners of this show are Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse. They're basically the Mike and Brian of uh, Lost, and J.J. Abrahams is credited as uh, one of the creators. He helped to get the show started, though wasn't involved really much after that. Some uh, actors that people may know know are Evangeline Lilly, who plays Kate in Lost. Most people more recently will know her as playing Toriel from the Hobbit movies. Uh, Dominic Monaghan as Charlie in Lost. 
Most people will know him as Mary from Lord of the Rings. Avatar fans will know Daniel Day Kim, who plays Jin in Lost as Hiroshi Sato, and also uh, General Fong from Korra and then Avatar The Lost Airbender. And then the final one, uh, more recently, is uh, Maggie Grace, who plays Shannon in Lost, maybe best known for her role as Kim in the Taken movies. And uh, final fact I'll just give is that uh, this is widely considered by critics to be uh, one of the top ten TV shows of all time. Uh, most... Uh, big websites uh, I'll, I'll put it in their top 10 list uh, so yeah I'll give my own reasons for choosing uh, this show after you guys give your general impressions on it so uh, we'll start with you Greg uh, overall you watched the first two episodes of Lost, Pilot Part 1 and Pilot Part 2 what were your thoughts on Lost? Um, it was really interesting not having, knowing sort of like the hype around the show, but not actually ever really, you know, taking the time to watch, you know, any of the episodes. Um, I was, uh, kind of, I don't know, I guess I was a bit surprised at how really interesting it is. It, I guess I can understand sort of, uh, more of the hype behind it and why everyone was so interested in watching it and like everyone was like sort of breaking it down. And I don't know, I just remember all the fanfare around it when it was coming out. And I guess now I can understand that I really did, uh, enjoy watching these first two two episodes um it really sort of uh hooked me into it uh, interesting is definitely a key word uh but uh, kelly what were your general thoughts on the first two episodes of lost yeah um i found them very interesting as well i pretty much completely agree with what you just said um i've known the hype i've definitely heard of the show and i've definitely heard of its famed um just you know how interesting and weird it is with the sci-fi element, but how a lot of people watched it. Like everybody watched it. And I was like, oh boy, okay. Um, so going into it, I kind of didn't know what to expect, but I genuinely liked it. It was, I thought it was very interesting, and um, I really like the way that they handle a lot of the elements of it. And uh, Troy, what about you? What were your general thoughts on the first two episodes? Yeah, it was very mysterious and very, it very much got me into it and wanting to see more just how much it's set up and how uh, craving I was to figure some of these things out. Uh, my own reasons for choosing this show, first and foremost, were that I knew I'd be choosing first on this show when we were planning it, so I really wanted to start us off with uh, just a show that is just widely considered one of the best of all time. I also wanted to start off with a live action show because I knew I probably wouldn't be choosing another for a while um, just to do that. Um, and yeah, for me, I would rate Lost as my third favorite TV show of all time. Avatar and Korra, obviously, one and two. Don't ask me to choose which one's one and two, but this, Lost is definitely a solid third place for me. It is my favorite live action TV show of all time. I did watch it when it came out and was kind of... I wouldn't say it was in the fandom, because I think at that time I didn't really know what a fandom was, um, but I was definitely like involved in that kind of initial hype around the show when it first came out and the popularity, and uh, that's another reason I wanted to show it. This is culturally a really important show, because um, I would almost cite this show as the reason why podcasts became so popular, the reason why like after shows and stuff like that became so popular, and probably one of the reasons why I really wanted to start the Avatar Online podcast, because I liked uh, listening to podcasts for Lost, and so I wanted to do that for Avatar, which is the show that I would say I'm kind of an expert at. Um, but uh, yeah, for me, I just love this show and how character-focused it is, uh, how well-written and continuity-based it is, uh, and that's that comes through very clearly in these opening two episodes. Um, as someone who's seen the whole show multiple times, there's so much continuity between the first episode and other episodes of the series. And uh, yeah, that's why I chose this show. So let's get into discussion topics. We're just going to go basically around uh, each, each person bring up the discussion topic and we'll discuss it. I'll start us off with uh, the format of the show. Basically, the format of the show... Maybe not the most clear from the, the, the two pilot parts, but uh, every episode of Lost uh, is kind of, I'd say, a third flashback, two-thirds on the island. Every episode of Lost is like that. In general, every episode of Lost focuses on one character's flashback and then uh, extra emphasis of what they're doing on the island, but that doesn't mean that no, one, no other characters are explored. So that's the main thing that you get here. And in these opening two episodes, we get the first episode is uh, kind of Jack-centric. We get uh, Jack's flashback to what he experienced on the plane just before the crash. And then in the second episode, we see Kate and Charlie experience that. Um, for, an, for example, episode three is the first normal 
kind of an episode, I suppose, of Lost, and that's a Kate-centric episode. You get more of Kate's backstory uh, with, a, with some emphasis of what she's doing on the island and stuff like that. So I definitely see, see the format as being one of the key reasons why I like this show, because it, in general, it's an interesting take to take on, on a show that just every episode has a flashback. And it's, it's something I really like in a lot of anime that they do that. They have flashbacks for nearly every character with the big anime. So I like that you never have to worry about, like, oh, is this character going to get their backstory explained? Because you know just by the format, if they speak for a bit on the show, they probably will. So, um, Troy, what were your thoughts on uh, the basically the format, having flashback, and then also you know stuff on the island as well? Yeah, I, I definitely thought it was strange. I, I kind of was like, you know, how long are they going to be able to keep these flashbacks up? I mean, there were like 48 survivors or something, so I, I guess it kind of makes sense for a while they'll be able to do that. But I'm surprised you said over the six seasons they continue to have flashbacks with the characters. So um, that definitely is interesting how flashback-centric it is. Yeah, I'll say in response to that is just uh, that, yes, there are 48 survivors, but you really, out of the 48 that you see here on the beach, basically, you only really focus on about 10 characters in or around that. So you get... Uh, character flashbacks on those 10 characters and some characters get multiple episodes throughout the season like Jack usually has like two or three maybe a season while some of the lesser characters like say Rose or Shannon only gets like one a season but uh, Greg what were your thoughts on the format? Um, I think that's actually pretty interesting the whole flashback thing I mean I would think that maybe it might get a bit tiresome but if they weave it in pretty well as they did in these two episodes I could see how that would be like really interesting to sort of get what they were doing especially like the ones on the plane like I mean those are the ones that we saw for most part here we haven't seen any other ones I thought those were pretty interesting just to sort of see what happened before everything went crazy so I think that could actually work pretty well I mean I would have to see episodes to really get a, a good feel on it but for from what I've seen from these two episodes it looks like it's a, a good format to go with and uh, Kelly, what are your thoughts on the format? Um, it sounds very interesting. I didn't expect the flashbacks to keep up. I mean, I liked the flashbacks in these two episodes. Um, I thought they were very interesting, um, for the most part. Um, and I'm interested to see how they're going to continue the flashbacks without it making it feel repetitive. Um, I'm sure it'll do fine, but to me, it's like if it's all the same flashbacks to like the exact same air flight like over and over... I'm not sure how that's going to go, but I'm sure I'm sure it probably doesn't well because we're always going to be constantly learning new things about these characters, which is kind of the point. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how they handle the flashbacks. Yeah, uh, all I'll add to that is just that um, a lot of season one flashbacks, what they revolve around is explaining it, why each character came to be on the plane, why they were go on this flight going from Sydney to L.A. and how it links in with their kind of specific... Um, problem in their life before the island and stuff like that basically like uh, uh, as we find out in this episode obviously Kate is the fugitive um, over, over the course of this season you find out basically what she did and why she's being transported from Sydney to LA and stuff like that why Jack was on the plane and stuff like that so it's not just like you experience the crash through everyone's eyes uh like other characters you flash further back in their lives uh, like uh, I think Sun and Jin's first uh, the Korean couple's first flashback I think if I remember correctly focuses on kind of how they first met as a couple I think that's what it is and stuff like that so you cover various different parts of their lives in general so um, yeah that's the first discussion topic um, Greg do you have a topic uh, you want to bring up? Um, yeah I guess from the first one I guess just everyone's sort of opinion on Jack being, you know, the doctor and him becoming sort of like, I guess, you know, the default hero of, you know, the whole group as of what we know right now and how even one of the other guys whose name I'm forgetting, um, he was in the fight on the beach, you know, he sort of like takes a step back to say, well, you're the hero, Jack, you know, we'll do what you say for now or whatever. Yes, that's uh, Sawyer who says that, yeah. I don't think he had his name, but yeah, he says it. Um, I suppose I'll put, put that to you guys first since you haven't seen it yet. I suppose, uh, Troy, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Jack being you know, the doctor, the leader character in the first two episodes, basically? I guess it just kind of makes sense because it was after a plane crash and everyone was injured, so he was the doctor, so he kind of made sense. Um, and he definitely did seem to be doing a pretty good job at being it. And whether or not he sticks as a leader, I don't know, but um, yeah, it made sense, and I think it worked. All right. And uh, Kelly, what were your thoughts on Jack? 
Um, yeah, I think it makes sense, too, because he's a doctor. He's the one taking care of everybody. Um, for me personally, I don't find him the most interesting out of the group, um, only because I think he does have that role as the doctor who, like, you know, helps everybody and just seems like that guy that would be there to be that leader. Like, he kind of embodies that role so much that, like, I don't find him as a character all that interesting just yet. Um, that, That's me personally. I don't dislike his character. I don't dislike his character, but I felt his flashback was kind of pointless. I Maybe I just didn't see something that everybody else saw, but, I mean, yeah, I didn't really care for his flashback either, so I'm interested to learn more about him, but... Right now, he's not, like, my favorite character or anything. Yeah, you have to wait. I think episode five is Jack's first flashback episode where you actually find out, like, I suppose, something interesting, really, about him. And that's something, I suppose, with the season in general. Like, uh, it it takes a little bit to kind of get to know every character specifically. Like, uh, I think Hurley, the kind of big guy's first uh, episode, isn't until, like, episode 15 or 16. So you, you don't really know what exactly is going on with him until, like, much later on in the season, but um, at least you do get to meet them eventually. But uh, I definitely agree. The first two episodes don't really show Jack like uh, as that like deep of a character, I suppose. <laughs> um, you do get that uh, obviously his job as a doctor means he's kind of perfect as the kind of initial leader of the group. But um, something that uh, I definitely noticed just watching the first two episodes is that um, he's almost trying to take on too much responsibility in that as the doctor he's basically the most important guy on the island early on but he's also the one who wants to go out on all of these treks and is kind of like annoyed that he kind of has to stay back and watch the marshal while Kate goes off on this trek and he's kind of very protective of, of everyone so you kind of have that interesting dynamic I think set up already in the in the season that uh, he's the doctor wants to stay but also protect people but also wants to go out and explore but uh, Greg I suppose um, what are your thoughts on, on him yeah um, I don't know I mean he seems he seems interesting enough just because he's involved with everything so he's he's you know he's sort of like holding the group together so from that part I think he's you know he's doing what he needs to do at least as far as the story is concerned but I do see what you're saying about him sort of wanting to go out on the trek but he couldn't because he had to help um I think it was uh, the US Marshal who had the the piece of the plane stuck in him so I don't know it I guess it'll be I don't know I, I'll be interested to sort of see how his sort of, you know, role plays out if it sort of changes over time, if he's not as always in sort of the forefront as he is in now. Um, that'll be, I don't know, that's just something that I'm curious to see how to play out, especially, I guess, in sort of like an episode when the marshal sort of wakes up and he sort of, you know, asks him where is she and whatnot. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how that sort of plays out, how his sort of relationship with Kate um, turns out after, you know, we find out more information about her backstory. Yeah, the- uh, without spoiling anything, I suppose, in future episodes, um, with Jack, kind of early on, what you get is that uh, everyone, I suppose, begins to rely on him as the leader, and he kind of, uh, he begins to get, I suppose, a little bit frustrated that everyone is relying on him to, like, uh, do yeah. everything doctor-wise, be the guy who resolves every single problem, and kind of, almost kind of drift away from wanting to be the leader, and stuff like that. That's kind of what they explore with Jack, and... Um, and I don't want to spoil, obviously, his uh, backstory thing, but it's actually pretty interesting what they do with him. Episode 5 uh, is his first episode. But, uh, yep. Uh, Kelly, do you have a talking point you want to bring up? Um, a specific one? I mean, I guess since we're going by character, um, I'll bring up another point after this point. Um, I guess about Evangeline Lilly's character. I found her to be mon- one of the more interesting plot twists, but also kind of interesting characters in general, so I guess her character and stuff. Yes, Kate. Um, yeah, the, very interesting in that uh, you obviously think she's one of the nicest people on the island, but then she has the kind of almost biggest reveal, uh, non-kind of island mystery reveal, in that she was the one who was handcuffed, she was the fugitive and stuff like that, and of all of the characters, she's probably the one you expect the least to know that, and it's it, it, interesting that you see that she ultimately is the one lying to everyone when, like, Saeed and Sawyer are fighting over who they think is the, um, who is the person captured and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, overall, very interesting character, Kate. Um, one thing, I suppose, in terms of her character arc, you see the word 
run brought up a lot whenever she's around, and that's actually a key mm-hmm. fact for character. You learn uh, some of some of that about her in episode three, the next episode, why that is, uh, why they keep bringing up the words run around her. Um, and uh, yeah, just it's just a lot of interesting stuff. Like like there there are hints like in like the first scene that uh, she is the uh, fugitive because she's rubbing her wrist when she walks out of the jungle and finds Jack, and there are scars on her wrists and stuff like that. So that adds to the kind of writing of the show that they set up for nearly every single character with all of this stuff. And uh, overall, yeah, interesting. But a- again, like with a lot of the characters, I say like. Definitely, you have to kind of wait until their first full flashback episodes to really kind of see who they are. Um, final point I'd make about Kate is just that, despite being the fugitive, she did save the marshal's life on the airplane, putting the gas mask on, which was pretty interesting because if she was like really the bad person, why would she do that? So um, you see a good person who's obviously done something wrong, and it makes you really wonder what exactly did she do to be a fugitive? But uh, Greg, what were your thoughts on that, Kate? Yeah, no, the, she is pretty interesting. I think, as of right now, the fact that we know that she actually did something bad is probably what makes her, like, one of the more interesting characters out of all we've seen so far. And it is interesting that she did sort of put the mask over the guy. Like, I, I noticed that, too, because you would think that she sort of, like, wouldn't do that um, because, you know, he's taking her in, so why would she bother helping him? But we definitely see that her character overall is, you know, more good-hearted in nature. Um, she definitely does want to help people, but I don't know. It seems that they are trying to work a lot of things uh, around her character, um, especially with, I guess, her relationship with Jack, and even somewhat sort of with um, Charlie as well. I mean, the fact that they have the three of them sort of go on the, I guess, sort of like the first mission to get the transceiver is, I guess that's an uh, interesting setup that may or may not play out later on. Um, um, so I thought that was interesting, just sort of how they're sort of focusing on those sort of three um, in this, uh, I guess, first part of the, the pilot. Mm-hmm. And Troy, what are your thoughts on Cage? No, she definitely is a, the most mysterious, most intriguing character. Just like uh, she's like this nice person, but yet she was captured. It, it definitely is interesting. Like you're doubting is she good or is she bad? Um, but, yeah, I, I didn't notice too much with character development, you know, being that I haven't, like, seen more episodes, but, um, you know, she definitely was interesting. Mm-hmm. And I suppose another thing is just, like, like Jack, in a way, she always kind of wants wants to be involved in a lot of the action going on at the island, and you see that she's kind of, she is one of the more capable characters, and then you see the moment where she's kind of lying about how to use a gun, kind of, because... It's obvious that, that that's what she was doing. But, uh, Kelly, uh, any further thoughts on Kate yourself? Uh, yeah, I found her very interesting just because, um, I mean, like, as soon as that was revealed, I found her, like, a million times more interesting. Because I remembered very early on that she cared for the guy with the marshal, the guy who has the piece of airplane stuck in his stomach. Um, and how, he, how she's like, is he going to be okay? I was sitting next to him. Like, she was willing to give up that information because she cared if the guy lived or not. So whatever she did didn't involve, or at least didn't mean to involve hurting other people. She clearly wanted him to live, which I thought was a very interesting thing. That's what made it more interesting to me. Even though she is this fugitive, she helped this person out. And while at the same time, you know, she's also the love interest um, for Jack, which is clear, like, right from the start, which is one of the reasons why I'm like, oh, boy, uh, which uh, which I guess I will bring up. I'm a little bit like, oh, well, here we go with that kind of thing. Yeah. I find her dialogue and the acting interesting enough. I think Evangeline Lilly really does a really yeah. good job with it. So I guess it impresses me that it's not, like, all that generic. So I, I, I like that. And I'm really, as soon as she was on the plane next to the guy, I was like, wait, is she the fugitive? Ah, there he is, she's fugitive. <laughs> and then, uh, ever since then, I'm like, okay, I immediately need to know what happened. So, yeah, yeah that was really good at the show. Yeah, and then with, yeah, with Evangeline Lee, it's really interesting. This was her first big acting role. Like, I think before this, she'd only ever done, like, commercials and stuff like that. Um, so, really interesting that, like, the stuff on the plane, I think, were, like, her first ever scenes, like, full on acting, the kind of flashback scenes. So, uh, all that, all considering, she does, like, an excellent job on this. And, uh, yeah, with regards to the whole love interest thing, uh, yes, there's a, slight element of shipping in this show, but it's never really, like, 
super heavy. Like they're not they're never episodes that are like full on like shipping focused or anything like that. It's always just kind of like okay, this is a kind of developing romance. Like does it even go anywhere in season one? Uh, apart from like a little moment here and there, not really. So um, it's not a thing where like. This is going to be like every single episode, Jack and Kate constantly like, uh, romance hint, romance hint, romance hint. Obviously because of what's just happened and that Jack's obviously going to find out, uh, probably start of next episode, that Kate is the fugitive, that's going to create a problem and stuff like that. So that's interesting, but yeah, I don't think the, the shipping is like a big issue, like perhaps it was at points in Korra, but... Um, yeah, I suppose while we're going through the characters, we'll cover the last, I suppose, main character and then touch on the other ones later on. Uh, Charlie is our other main character, the music- musician, and we also later find out a uh, heroin addict, uh, who is famous for uh, being in the band Drive Shaft, which is not really active anymore, which is what we get from some of the dialogue. And the big thing with him is that uh, they really focus in on him when he calls himself a coward, and then Kate says, you're not a coward. Uh, that's a big part of his kind of... Uh, story in terms of what you learn about his backstory and uh, yeah the, the big thing with him is obviously what happens when he runs out of heroin he only had a little stash of it and he's clearly an addict and stuff like that uh, in the flashback it was really clear that he was going to stop using heroin he was like flushing it down the toilet but the crane the plane crashed before that happened and stuff like that so pretty interesting mm-hmm. idea for a character straight away but uh, Greg what are your thoughts on Charlie? He's uh he's actually pretty interesting. I mean, he's sort of like the third person that we see the most of, and the fact that he goes, I think I mentioned this before, but he goes on the trip, but he's sort of like, I guess, I would see him as sort of like odd men out out of, you know, Kate and Jack, um, as far as how they do it. Like, you even see a few times, he's like, you know, my name is, my name is Charlie, not, not Jack, and I guess that's, I don't know, that's, I just noticed that, how they sort of, sort of, um, make fun of his character in these first few episodes, and I don't know, the fact that he's sort of, you know, a drug addict that adds another sort of interesting element to him, and the fact that he was in a band, and he says, you know, still having a comeback tour, but I'm assuming, I guess, they're probably not having a comeback tour. I don't know. It just makes his character seem a bit interesting. Um, I mean, you see him sort of, like, walking around the beach, like, aimlessly in the beginning, and he almost gets hit with, like, a piece of the plane. Like, I don't know, they're definitely doing something around him. Like, even, I think in the beginning, he also was, like, writing uh, Fate on his knuckles on, like, tape, and I was, I don't know, I was really wondering sort of, like, what that was about, but, you know, maybe we'll find out in the future. So, it definitely seems like they're doing a lot with this character. Um, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see if we ever get, like, or I guess we probably will, considering how the show's formatted, but when we get, like, a real flashback of his and, like, maybe when he's in the band and how that sort of played out and why he's on the plane, it should be pretty pretty interesting with him. Yeah, episode seven is Charlie's first uh, flashback episode, and, uh, yeah, you're, you're definitely onto something there with the whole fate thing, and he goes to kind of cross himself before he throws the heroin away, so a hint at the whole uh, being slightly religious uh, with him. But, uh, Kelly, what were your thoughts on Charlie? Yeah, um, I actually think he was probably my favorite character out of the episode so far. He's definitely the most interesting, and I say that because I feel like, um, like the whole all the different elements he has together is one, like him writing fate on his knuckles, um, the, immediately the heroin uh, situation, because it's one of those things where he could be a really he could be like a decent person, like a cool person, but. Uh, he, he has no more heroin, so um, this, this this could lead to some really interesting and unfortunate consequences, um, as well as, like, the whole idea that he was in a band, that, you know, something happened between him and that band, and I liked when they first introduced him to Evangeline Lily. It's like, why do you look so familiar, but I don't quite know you? I thought that was going to be, like, some kind of weird sci-fi element. I misunderstood. I was like, why does everybody seem to recognize And then he's like, oh, I was in a band. I was like, oh, okay, something normal. So I feel like his story is probably the most... And not normal, but yeah, I would say like most human or normal out of the characters so far, as weird as that is to say. And I'm really interested to see what he does and what happens to him. Mm, He definitely has a character who I suppose is immediately presented with the most obvious like issue that they have to get over on the island. Like, because Jack's just the leader and there's like hints that he may not be the best leader and Kate's the fugitive. But yeah, definitely Charlie seems to story represent be presented with some sort of a plot he has to deal with but uh troy what were your thoughts on charlie yeah he um it, it is interesting that he has this plot i didn't even think about that um 
But, yeah, no, I think he was definitely interesting. He was one of those characters that wasn't, like, super mysterious or super heroic. He was just kind of there, and you were, you know, you were just watching him unfold and watching his story play out. Um, and how he wanted to go back to the bathroom of the cockpit, um, near the cockpit and stuff definitely showed. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, that's actually interesting you bring it up. That's a nice continuity moment. Like, he lies about what he's doing in the bathroom when, in fact, he, the reason he goes in there is to get his heroin out after he threw, threw it into the sink toilet earlier on, and that's how he actually gets what he has. So, interesting uh, continuity there. But um, I suppose, uh, Troy, do you, do you actually have a talking point to bring up right now? I guess just how they handle some more graphic elements, such as the blood and injuries. Mm, yeah. Uh, hmm. I suppose, uh, Greg, Greg uh, what are your thoughts on that? They don't go too overboard, I don't think, with it. Yeah, no, it doesn't seem like they're they're being too heavy-handed. Um, I mean, they do describe, you know, I think um, Hurley, he likes this. There's, like, a lot of B.O.D.Ys, you know, and it's supposed to be B.O.D.S. Um, in, like, the cockpit or whatever. So they definitely do talk about sort of, like, the gruesomeness of, you know, the plane crash. Like, there's no real way to sort of avoid that but it's not too overbearing like you do see like you know a few bodies on the beach that are clearly of dead people and i guess the most gruesome one is you know the pilot when he's sort of like pulled out of the plane um you do see sort of his body on the top of the trees and you do see like a lot of blood around him but other than that i can't think of anything that was too overbearing gruesome like even when they're sort of pulling the shrapnel out of um the marshal it's not it's not too crazy even though hurley passes out over it um which i thought was kind of funny um but yeah it doesn't seem like they're going too crazy with it which i guess fits with you know the sort of the rating of the actual show they can't be like too overbearing with it so i think they're doing a pretty good job of it and not like trying to make us feel like queasy to our stomachs yeah, like, as I said at the start, like, it, this is an adventure show more than, like, a survival horror type show. Like, it's not like every episode someone's going to get killed or the monster's in every episode hunting people mm-hmm. down. It it does get more kind of just focused on the people uh, as the season progresses. And de- definitely, uh, as, as the seasons go on, it's never, like, super gory or anything like that. They more focus kind of almost Avatar style on it where like it's more about the impact that someone being injured or someone being killed has than showing what happened to them sort of thing but uh, Kelly what, what were your thoughts on the kind of whole gore aspect and uh, I suppose how they showed blood and stuff like that um, death yeah um, as somebody who does not like watching gore and <laughs> was probably one of the biggest concerns going into this show about being a plane crash and you know all that stuff um, I was definitely concerned over that um, I'm surprised at how downplayed it is but not but I'm, it's not that downplayed because I remember early on there was this one shot that kind of got to me where they're pulling this guy out from under the plane and his entire leg is covered in blood yeah. and I would, that disturbed me personally but I trust what you guys are saying in that the whole show isn't focusing on the violence specifically it's more the adventure and I can see that I can see that it's not going to try to use the shock factors that often any violence that we see would probably or any blood or gore that we would see would probably just be out of the necessity of the scenarios that they're in I don't think so far I haven't seen anything that like shoves you in your face so look at all this blood you know what I mean like it's just kind of like ne- necessary because of the situation that they're in so I appreciate that still kind of crazy when that guy was in the trees and there was like blood all over her. I was like, oh, but um, nothing too crazy. For some reason, it's not that I'm not that freaking out over it. So I'm happy that they're handling it fairly well. But that leg part actually really got to me. I was like, oh, his entire leg is crushed. Yeah. But oh, well, it's still good. But this was, even then, like, it is just the color. Like, they, you don't actually see what happened to his leg. It's just yeah. that his leg is covered in red stuff, kind of like, rather than actually showing like, like the bone is this or that. But uh, Troy, you brought this up. Uh, what are your own thoughts on how they do it? Yeah, it, it, I think that was my biggest negative with it. Not, you know, I felt like it was pretty scary, and just like the whole stories that Jack was saying and stuff about his time being a surgeon and stuff, I thought were pretty intense. Um, but yeah, no, um, if, and if you say it's not that bad, then I believe that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his story yeah, it gets a little bit kind of uh, like specific, but uh, what do you expect from a surgeon? But. Uh... Yeah, that, that's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, that, that's, that, that story obviously does have what, obvious set up in the episode with Jack tells that to Kate and then Kate uses that technique to calm down at the end of the first episode. But it also li- links into Jack and another character, but I won't spoil that whole connection. Um, 
But uh, yeah, might I'll bring up another point. Um, hmm, I suppose what I bring up. Uh, I suppose that some of the supernatural fi- slash sci-fi elements here. Really, it's just the monster in the jungle and. Maybe you could say the polar bear being on the island is a sci-fi element. Uh, obviously, these are mysteries that uh, don't get resolved straight away, but definitely they're the only things in the, episode, in the episodes that really show the sh- that the show is not just a standard people have crashed on an island and something's happened. Like There are mysterious stuff going on, like your monster you can clearly see when they first see it is going through the jungle, knocking down trees, and then... Uh, it makes crazy sound effects uh, when it obviously attacks the pilot um, and uh, just in, in general <laughs> that this monster just seems to be super natural, something crazy is going on here and then you have other stuff going on like they, they hear the message from like 16 years ago so you have a hint that other people were on the island but everyone is, is going with the whole idea about what exactly island are we actually on? Like is this a place that's known on the map or is it something else um, uh, Kelly what were your thoughts on that the, the supernatural sci-fi elements to the show yeah this is where things got very interesting for me because I knew they were going to be sci-fi well not sci-fi I knew there was going to be some kind of fantasy element but I think it was around the part like I, I was a little okay like I, I'm interested but I'm also a little skeptical I don't know why as somebody who just earlier said I liked fantasy sci-fi stuff <laughs> I just really I to me it's weird because you know what it is that's very strange to me all these characters feel very real and live in a very real world and to introduce this element of sci-fi like ooh what's chasing us or why is there a polar bear it feels out of place but I'm aware it's probably gonna that I'm not gonna feel this way as the show goes on but like from right off the bat it felt very odd to me like because these people seemed more in a real world rather than a fantasy world but i guess that's the idea the fact that these are real people landing on this island that's doing strange things that they can't even comprehend so if anything that makes it more interesting but um what do you call it the part where um there was a noise in the forest right off the start the first hint of the fantasy element i thought that was just a part of the plane that was going off but then everybody was like what is this and i was like oh, that was a monster? I was like, okay, that's a little strange. And it was around the end of the second pilot episode where I kind of got a little... It's not corny, but, like, it's interesting to see what's going on, but at the same time, I feel like the way it's handled is very, like, Twilight Zone. You know what I mean? Like, like the part with the polar bear. I was like, what? There's a polar bear? So I think it's something I'm going to have to get used to. It's something I'm going to have to get used to. Oh, yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, It's not bad. It's just something I'm going to get used to. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Greg? What are your thoughts on these kind of more odd elements, I suppose, to the, the show? Um, I don't know. It, they didn't bother me too much the way that they actually sort of brought into the show. Like, I mean, even right from the beginning where you do see sort of like something's moving in sort of like the bush in the forest, Um, it didn't seem too odd to me just because, you know, I don't know, the island seems just off the bat to have some sort of mysterious like qualities to it, so it didn't jar me too much, and since I did know a bit about the show and I knew that there was sort of some sci-fi element to it, it didn't it didn't bother me quite as much. I mean, I was pretty much like waiting for the sci-fi elements to be shown in the show, so I don't know, I think it's, it'll be pretty interesting. I mean, the polar bear, that was, you know, one of the odd parts of the show, especially how they sort of like break it down how you know like how is there a polar bear on this sort of you know i guess this sort of a tropical island um so they definitely are sort of like i guess playing it up um so i don't know for right now it seems like it'll probably work out um later on as they go on i guess that's just you know one of the mysteries of this island and uh, troy what are your thoughts on these more supernatural elements of the show yeah no i think it would actually be a very boring show if they would just all on an island and it was like our world type of survival stuff and i think that would get boring very quickly because it's something that we've all seen um yeah and i'm glad they had it in there and that's the one thing i actually knew about the show going in is that it was a very mysterious show and it had a lot of mystery to it so i like seeing the polar bear and stuff just like showed what i kind of was knew about it um and in itself it was kind of interesting but it's like you know we've seen weirder yeah, uh, for me, uh, kind of, I think Troy kind of hit the nail on the head with like why these elements are in the show. It's to keep it from just being that classic plane crash. Did they survive? Because the obvious question you're asking straight away is, 
when are they going to get off? How do they get off? What are they going to do to get off the island? While the mystery elements kind of want you to go, okay, I'm fine with them kind of getting away from the, like, okay, they're not going to be rescued for a while. I'm perfectly fine with them staying on this island to explore it a bit, to get some of these mysteries, as opposed to, like, most other shows where it's just, you know, how do we make fire? And all of this stuff, like, that's an episode, and just, like, does anyone argue with anyone? And, like, you have that, but you also have this other mystery element that makes you actually like what's going on on the island. Uh, so that's pretty good. Um, but uh, so it's back to you, Greg. Uh, do you have another talking point you want to bring up? Um, sure. Um, I guess they drop, like, a lot of hints throughout the show, or it seems like they do, like, a lot of, I guess, sort of, like, symbolism that I've noticed throughout the show. Like, they have a couple parts where they have, like, sort of, like, a random shoe on the branch, or they sort of do, like, a slow pan to Kate taking off, like, the shoes off of a dead body, or even, you know, the couple random scenes we see with, like, the dog, um, the little boy's dog in, like, sort of forest, and somehow the dog is able to survive where everyone else is running away from, you know, these huge monsters. I guess just sort of any of those items that anyone has sort of noticed and if they've seen any connections that they might have uh, been able to put together from that. Yeah, I think I'll hold my tongue on this topic because I have a lot of answers here. But uh, Kelly, uh, what were your thoughts on some of the kind of symbolism and kind of setup moments that you kind of noticed throughout the episode? Yeah, there was a lot of strange little things going on. I think that's another thing I really like about this show is while I'm kind of missing out on a lot of them, I'm able to see that they're obviously setting up a lot of stuff. Like, I really like how they're, like giving us little things here and there to think about, and then they actually apparently answer these things, as you as you say. So I found it, the first thing I noticed right off the bat, and I really hope this is explained, is the very beginning of the show. Jack waking up at least 50 feet away from the crash, all, like, I'm not fine, but something's off. Like, how did he land perfectly in this bamboo forest place while everybody else was still around the plane? I mean, I tried thinking, like, okay, maybe what if he, like, staggered off and kind of passed out, maybe? that, But I, something seems a little off about it. I don't really know why. And then the dog. The dog is perfectly fine. Like, the, that dog would be injured. What? Why is he fine? So that's another interesting fact. Um, in, or mystery. Um, little things here and there that I noticed around that, too. I, I didn't really pick up on them as much, only because I kind of watched these in the morning, and I probably should have been paying attention a little bit more for that kind of stuff. But... That's what's interesting. Like, I'll be looking out for little answers here and there. And I really like how they're doing it in a not very forceful way. Um, like, the, like the fate thing. Like, it's just a shot. I like how they don't need to explain every single camera angle or every shot that they have. But it's something that they want you to think about. So I thought that was kind of cool. And, uh, Troy, what about you? Did you notice any of those kind of little moments of just kind of symbolism or, like, set up for mysteries that may eventually be answered? Not so much symbolism, but just, like, imagery and, like, emotional feel and, like, tone of it with how they did the cameras and stuff. It definitely got the emotions across on, like, how crazy it was and like, little things going on in the background, like, little issues trying to get resolved in the back room as Jack was walking along the crash scene just kind of added to it and made it feel, like, really desperate and essentially very lost. Mm. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, I'll bring up some stuff. Um... Like, in terms of, like, hints at the future stuff that they, like, show in the episode, don't explain at all. Like, you see Sawyer uh, just sitting on a part of the plane reading a piece of paper. That's, like, incredibly important to his character, what is on that letter and what it means to him. That's massive. Uh, when John Locke is talking to Walt uh, after the whole backgammon scene and he explains it to him, uh, when he puts the two pieces uh, in front of his eyes and does the light and dark thing, that's like a huge theme of the show, um, light and dark. And obviously what he what he actually says to Walt, you know, I have a secret. That secret's really important. Uh, and uh, Locke is obviously one of the uh, fan favorite characters. Um, I'll say nearly every single time a number is mentioned at any stage in the show is super important, uh, like the fact that uh, the number of the flight was 815, Claire says that she's 8 months pregnant, uh, 48 survivors, row 23 in the plane. If you remember all of this stuff, it'll have some sort of a payoff later on when something is revealed um, hmm. in the first season, so uh, that's pretty interesting, and uh, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff like that. Greg mentioned the shoe on the tree at the end of the opening scene, that's... Uh, that's actually fairly important um, and stuff like that so 
they really wrote this show like exceptionally well when it came to like setting up stuff that they wouldn't pay off for some of the stuff isn't paid off until like the sixth season like some of the stuff that Kelly touched on there about why does Jack wake up in the little bamboo forest away from everyone how is Vincent safe and that kind of plays into the whole fact of like why did these specific characters survive while other people were killed um, and most of the characters that did survive were completely fine like there was they got a few scratches but nothing was wrong to, with them when the plane actually like uh, broke up into three as we saw like the tail end disappeared as we saw in Kate's flashback and they find the front of the plane in the first episode so it plays into a lot of that sort of stuff and you do get the explanation for the plane crash I think towards the end of the first season or start of season two I think it's that um, but even so that's only kind of like half of the explanation and then that still doesn't explain how exactly they survived and stuff like that. So there's a lot of complexities, but the looking back on it now, having like I haven't watched the show in a couple of years, but just watching these two episodes, it's just like there's so much connection to or various other parts of the series. But uh, yeah, really cool stuff. But uh, Greg, any further points yourself after bringing this up? Um, no, not too many more. I just, I don't know, it's just really interesting how to sort of set up that whole, you know, all those various parts. I just, I don't know, I'm really interested in seeing what those are going to sort of turn into. I guess that's probably one of the main draws for me to continue watching this show. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kelly, uh, back to you. Do you have a talking point to bring up? Uh, I actually kind of do. It's not. I'm not sure if it counts as a talking point, but as much as these three characters that we've talked about are the main focus, I guess we can kind of bunch the other ones in their own category in my in the category being kind of like how they handle developing characters as many as they have you know what i mean how they handle giving screen time to all the characters because to me that's probably the most impressive part of the show right now Mm -hmm. so yeah let's touch on those other characters yes uh yes jack jack and kate i would say are the main characters and over time i would say the four main characters in the show are jack kate john locke and Sawyer. They're the four, I suppose, main, main characters who get the most flashback episodes. The other characters get focus depending on what season it is, and then some of them are kind of, remain kind of minor characters, get one episode a season. But uh, yeah, basically, Michael and his son Walt, Sun and Jin, the Korean couple, John Locke, Saeed, Sawyer, Shannon and Boone, Hurley, um, who else do we have here? Uh, And Claire. They're all basically the characters this season get introduced to some more at, at times uh, and stuff like that as seasons go on, but they're the main kind of season one characters, so I suppose the first two I have here are Michael and his son, Walt um, and yeah, with them what we get in the first two episodes is that um, Michael is now basically the guardian of his son after Walt reveals that his mother died suddenly, and that's why they're both travelling from Australia because they live there uh, Walt and his mother and clearly Michael doesn't actually know his son very well and he's kind of constantly doing all of this stuff that actually upsets his son like saying I'll buy you another dog when the dog is like really important to Walt and stuff like that and you get a few little bits of set up between Michael and other characters but primarily it's Michael and Walt and uh, you get that with a couple of these characters where like their stories are kind of intertwined because of their relationships you know it's Michael and his son Son and Jane are a married couple, uh, Shannon and Boone are brothers, but uh, I suppose Michael and Walt first and foremost, I suppose Kelly, uh, what were your thoughts on uh, those two? Um, yeah, my heart kind of broke when we first see uh, Michael talking to someone and you don't know who it could be and then you just see a kid laying down and I'm just like, no, <laughs> why is there a kid involved in all this? Like, I genuinely didn't know there was going to yeah. be a child survivor. I didn't expect that element, so I'm scared for his life. <laughs> um, but no, as characters, they're very interesting to me so far as well. Um, not interesting, but I like them. I like them. Like, I, I kind of hope everything kind of works out for them. And um, it's very interesting what happened to his dog, like how his dog is apparently fine after all that. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I like them, but they haven't really done anything crazy to contribute to um, the story yet. But I'm pretty sure they have potential to very soon enough. Mm, yeah, yeah. The, the big thing with these two, though, with Michael, is obviously that um, in the scene with Jack, like he, he doesn't even know what age his son is initially. He's like uh, nine, uh, ten, uh, and stuff like that. And uh, th- there's a few interesting scenes there. But uh, Greg, what were your thoughts on this? Uh, these these two, Michael and Walt. 
Um, yeah, no, they they seem rather. I don't know. I mean, they're they're definitely using them in sort of, I guess, sort of a, a low key way as of right now, since we don't know too much about them. Um, I actually have seen a bit of another episode, so I do actually a little bit more about them. But from what I've seen in these two episodes, it's just interesting how you know the son's like really concerned for the dog, and Jack does tell um, the father that you know the dog is fine and he is out there in the forest. So it'll be interesting to see if um, he actually sort of goes to look for the dog to sort of bring it back to his son maybe that'll sort of win him back over so i don't know i think it'll just be interesting how you know they know each other that well if you know being on this island if that'll sort of i guess bring them closer together which i don't know that'll be interesting sort of how that plays out um but yeah the fact that they have a child survivor that is you know kind of sad we'll have to see how that works out i mean that might add like an interesting element to there being like you know someone young out of all the survivors um other than i guess maybe the baby that'll come forth later on but um yeah no that's definitely an interesting element that they added to the show and uh troy what are your thoughts on that michael and his son walt no, that is interesting how they have a child survivor. Like, will some of the characters, like, be more friendly towards him while there's, because he's a child where all this other crazy stuff is going on? Uh, and it definitely is interesting. Like, the two people that are, like, the two couples that already know each other, like, um, not counting, like, the prisoner and, um, the guardsman, but, like, the father and son, like, we don't know them that well. Well, they don't know each other that well either, so it works out. And then the married couple is Korean, so we don't understand them. So it kind of works out well that we're getting introduced to them at the same time they're getting introduced to each other. Mm, yep. And, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of what the, the kind of show touches on a lot uh, with uh, these characters that kind of come in in, like, uh, duos or groups that uh, if they didn't have a relationship off the island, being on the island is actually giving them a chance to actually explore that because they're kind of removed from the kind of normal world and they have to just focus on sticking together and stuff like that. And uh, Greg kind of touched on it there, but yeah, early plot for these two is obviously Michael trying to get Walt's dog back to kind of have that kind of first father moment, big father moment with uh, Walt. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty important one. I suppose uh, let's continue through these minor, more minor characters in the first episode and go to uh, Sun and Jin, the Korean couple. And uh, the main thing we get with those is that we see that Jin is kind of controlling of her initially, but then at the same time kind of has almost turnaround at the end of the episode where he starts to offer these kind of like uh, this fish of kind of friendship to Hurley and then Claire and then he's the one who has the kind of moment where Claire kind of feels her baby kick again uh, while Son has this kind of thing of kind of almost rebelling a little bit against uh, Jin being so kind of uh, controlling of her uh, with the whole top button thing being closed or open uh, and stuff like that so again you, you get a hint at here the, the married couple with kind of problems with their relationship uh, Kelly uh, what were your thoughts on these two? Uh, yeah I thought they were interesting um, I mean I don't really have too much thoughts I, I, you know the most interesting thing I find about them is the fact that we don't know what they're saying um, that they're Korean and that they don't feel that they haven't used any subtitles or anything to have us understand what's going on between them. So it's all kind of left up to acting, which I feel like they've both done a good job doing, being able to express these emotions uh, of what's going on, even though we don't know what they're saying. So that's interesting to me. Um, and what kind of is interesting to me is the fact that he is so controlling, but then later he kind of fishes and gets food for everybody and walks around and gives people food. And I was like, okay. I kind of don't know his deal. I, and I'm really bad at names, so I'm just going to say the actor. I don't know Daniel Day Kim's deal. Yeah. Like, I don't know what's going on with him, really. And um, I thought it was very interesting to have him be the one to feel like the baby kick again in that woman's uh, stomach that the baby was okay. To have, like, the guy who seems the most air so far, like, we all don't like you be the one to have this moment. So yep. I'm not entirely sure where the show is going with them. Oh. That's actually a little bit of a setup moment for a, a plot that happens with Sun and Jin, the fact that he felt the baby kick. That's actually, like, important to their kind of character arc. But uh, that's just how crazy the show written is. But uh, but uh, I suppose, uh, Troy, uh, what are your thoughts on the Korean couples? No, I think that they work well, and it definitely is interesting how they kind of have these issues with each other that you can really understand without them using any words, which will only add more to what happens when they do start to use words, um, which I think will work well. And it, it's neat that they kind of offer, like, food to everyone, but only some people accept it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Greg, what are your thoughts on these two? 
Yeah, the the food offering was an interesting element. For some reason, I didn't really know what was happening with that sort of scene. Like, I didn't immediately think it sort of was like good of friendship. I thought he was like, I don't know, maybe trying to do something to people. But um, I think that is sort of a, a nice touch that he sort of did, and he did sort of get like the moment with um the baby kicking. I think that that definitely will play into his character later on. I would uh, sort of suspect. But yeah, the whole relationship between them is is pretty interesting. How he's sort of like overbearing, and I sort of wonder how sort of their relationship started if it was sort of like some sort of like arrangement that they're together or if there's something else that's you know between them because definitely by she you see that she's sort of like i don't know rebelling against sort of his over controlling and i don't know i just think that'll make it really interesting later on um how they sort of like play that up so now i'm i'm kind of looking forward to what happens with them yeah and uh I suppose I'll just hint at it, but yeah, there's a there's also set up with uh, Sun and just a couple of the scenes there where she is speaking in Korean to people and like you you just kind of like what was that scene about? Like she was just randomly saying stuff. There was no subtitles, like saying what she was saying to anyone. That's kind of set up for uh, something you learn about her at a uh, later stage. But uh, let's cover the next uh, duo of characters who are uh, Shannon and Boone, who are obviously uh, brother and sister. Uh, the kind of two of our kind of younger, young adult type characters. And um, and yeah, the main thing here is that the kind of I suppose contrast between the two of them. She is kind of just kind of uh, spoiled a little bit, pamper. She just expects to be rescued, and then gr- very quickly comes uh, realizes the kind of gravitas of the situation and kind of breaks down, knowing that they're going to be here for a while. While he is kind of trying to be the the Jack, the hero at the start of the show, you know, trying to do all this stuff because he has some knowledge of stuff. You know, he says he's a lifeguard, but he's not <laughs> doing it correctly. He trying to help Jack get the pens, and then Jack didn't actually want the pens and stuff like that. And and he's just kind of trying as hard as he can to help out, uh, wanting to seem capable. And that, that's kind of his character. Like uh, he wants to be capable. He isn't really the most skilled character like some of the other ones um, and there's a little bit of an antagonistic relationship between the two kind of classic brother sister um, but uh, yeah interesting thing uh, but uh, Greg I suppose what were your thoughts on Shannon and Boone um, yeah I thought that was uh, sort of interesting how they're sort of playing their relationship and how you definitely can tell that she seems like really really like spoiled and pampered from whatever, you know, I guess their backstory is, which I think I have seen a little bit of that, so I do know a little bit about them. Um, but yeah, no, that's just interesting how she sort of really thinks that, like, she's going to be saved. Like, she even, like, suntans on the beach in, like, her bikini um, while, like, waiting for, or she thinks um, waiting to get rescued. But I don't know, that is interesting. You do see her have, like, um, like one moment with um, the other woman who's, um, who's pregnant. So I don't know. It's interesting how in just these two episodes how she sort of does sort of, like, change her, her whole mindset. Like, she actually goes on the hike and she does have like a somewhat important moment of translating um the 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 transmission in french so they're definitely going to use her character to some degree um which will be pretty interesting how that sort of plays out i guess yeah then you kind of have the opposite of boone with shannon in that she kind of is capable but like thinks she's not and like it's interesting thing with their relationship but uh troy what were your thoughts on uh shannon and boone brother and sister yeah, they definitely are interesting how opposite they are. Like, one thinks they know a lot, but really can't help, and the other one kind of can help, but doesn't think she can. And yeah, I was just kind of like, you know, she. I kind of understand to be pessimistic at a time like that, but she's just so annoying. At least, like, she's being set up now to be so annoying that it's like, why, you know, why? Like, why are you upset? But, you know, I guess it kind of makes sense, but... um. No, I, I hope she is going somewhere, and I hope that he develops some, too, with what he's able to do, and maybe has a moment where he realizes he's not that great, and then has to, like, learn his way back up or something. And, uh, Kelly, what are your thoughts on Shannon and Boone? Yeah, the points you bring up are really good. I noticed that as well, the contrast between the two, the fact that um, she thinks that she can't do anything and that they're going to come rescue her. And I I agree, Troy. I actually find her a very annoying character as well. But the Mm -hmm. thing that makes her interesting is the fact that um, I think it's just the fact that she honestly thinks she's going to get it off this island. Okay, I'm waiting for that realization moment. that I think it's a coping mechanism. I think she's like, oh, no, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. I'm just going to wait here till we're rescued. I think she just can't handle the situation and that she's probably going to snap at one point. Like, oh, my God, we're really not going to get off this island. So that's kind of what I'm unfortunately waiting for. (laughs) 
So this way she could start actually like having self confidence and helping and doing things. She translated the thing at the end. She knows she does know things, but thinks she can't do things. Meanwhile, the brother wants to help, but I mean, it actually kind of cracked me up how long it took him to get those pens. You know what I mean? Like, like he's like, oh, I wasn't sure which one was good, and this was like what five minutes after what happened. So I mean, he tried. He tried. He genuinely tried, but. It's a very interesting contrast that they're both kind of very young, but one wants to help, can't, and one doesn't want to help, but can. So, it's, I they're not like my favorites, yep. but I like the contrast. I find the contrast interesting. Yep, uh, I suppose it, it's interesting just to have a few kind of characters who are adults, but they're very young adults um, on the island. Uh, next up, I suppose we'll go to John Locke. We don't get a lot on him in the uh, first two episodes, but he's the kind of uh, older man bit weird creepy uh has a few kind of like kind of moments where you're just like this seems important but what does it mean where like it just starts torrenting down rain everyone goes for cover and he just sits on the beach and kind of like embraces the rain and seems pretty wise kind of knowledgeable knowledgeable about stuff uh when explaining the game to walt he has the whole light dark moment tells walt the secret and yeah, it just seems a little bit kind of, I suppose, socially awkward as well in, in that scene with uh, Kate taking the, the boots off the dead body and then he does the orange peel smile thing and he's just like, oh, wrong moment to do that one. But uh, yeah, he, uh, I'll just say right now, a uh, huge fan favorite character and if you guys watch as far as episode four, which is his first episode, that's widely considered one of the best episodes in the entire series, episode 4, Walkabout, which is his first uh, flashback. There's huge moments that you find out about him that makes him super interesting. But, uh, Troy, what were your thoughts on uh, John Locke? He definitely was, like, one of the mysterious characters. Like, he's definitely the one being set up that he's, like, the one who's the antagonist and is causing all these weird things to happen just because he's knowledgeable about it. And he's, like, perfectly calm while all this other crazy stuff is happening. Um, and then the backgammon stuff is weird. Like, I like I, I was just kind of like, yeah, I want this to mean something, but could you explain it a little bit more? Um, definitely was interesting. So, um, And I'll, it'll be interesting if he does, like, join the main group and help fight the island, even though he kind of seems like a creep right now. So that'd be interesting. Yeah, you're definitely on the right path there with him and that... Uh the thing that you really get with him is that he's kind of just embracing everything that's happened like while everyone's kind of concerned about everything going on he's just kind of like enjoying this crazy new situation and the kind of interesting things happening on the island but uh, Kelly what were your thoughts on uh, John Locke? Um, yeah he was definitely very interesting that scene with him in the rain was very I liked that scene a lot like I didn't know what was going on but I felt like um, I was both skeptical and intrigued by this character. Like, I'm scared if he does anything, but at the same time, he seems harmless. Like, it's a very interesting... Like, I guess, ironically, it seems very black and white. Like, the two things that he shows. Like, he could either be, like, a really good character or a really bad character. I don't really know. Um, what do you call it? I imagine the reason why he's like this is, um, it seems like one of those things where he's happy that he crashed. He's happy to get away from everything. Like, he... Being lost on this island is a good thing to him. Or at least if he's using it as a coping mechanism, that it's a good thing this happened to him. And I think that's a very interesting uh, plot point. I'm interested to see more of this character. I can see why he's a fan favorite. Yeah, that's actually one of the themes of kind of the whole show in that you kind of find out with nearly every character that they kind of have a situation like that where, like, they're trying as hard as they can to get off the island, but, like, do they really have anything that they need to get back to that importantly because they all have their problems on the uh, off-island and, you know, a lot of the characters end up kind of making the decision like is it kind of better to have this new island life on the island or go back to the problems I had in my real life so he kind of uh, shows that very clearly here but uh, Greg your thoughts on John Locke yeah I just like everyone's saying I just thought he was really interesting and really such a, a odd character for not really having you know that much to do with him in these first two pilot uh, episodes you you definitely do get a sort of a, a odd feeling about him as far as you know is he good is he bad you know how is he sort of being the sort of like odd older character who 
probably knows a lot. Maybe he actually even knows something about the island, but you just don't really know enough about him yet. He's still interesting the way that they sort of show his few, you know, scenes in these episodes. Um, this definitely, uh, makes him really intriguing and I can sort of see why he would be sort of, uh, a fan favorite character, even though he doesn't really do that much in these two, uh, pilot episodes. Yep. If you're at all interested in John Locke, watch episode four of Lost. It's pretty amazing. Uh, but next up, we'll go to Saeed, who is uh, obviously the uh, former Iraqi soldier who uh, fought during the Gulf War. And he's obviously said he was a communications officer, so he knows technology well. He comes into play because the transceiver isn't working so well. He can fix it. Um, and obviously just the fact that he's from Iraq but has ec- excellent English, probably like the best, most clearest English of the entire cast, probably. Um, and he's obviously dealing with the whole stereotypes from all the other characters because uh, obviously the show came out uh, three years after 9-11 and that was obviously a kind of big thing at the time and Sawyer accusing him of crashing the plane and him being the uh, fugitive when in fact no, it wasn't him. Uh, he's actually one of the nicer and uh, more I suppose, capable characters on the island. He has like skills that could come in use on the island. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty interesting. But uh, Greg, what are your thoughts on Saeed? I thought he was really, really interesting. Just like the way that they sort of like, I guess, sort of play his character up, you know, him being accused by Sawyer of, of uh, being like a terrorist and maybe possibly down in the plane. Like they, they're definitely using this character in like a really, really interesting, really good way. And the fact that we do find out that he's part of the Republican Guard and that's actually sort of like, you know, the opposite side of, um, you know, as opposed to America and the fact that he has that sort of conversation with um Harley, I think it's it's really, really interesting. Like for him out of all the characters so far, I probably would want to sort of get his sort of like flashback episode. I think that would be really interesting to see where he sort of came from and why he sort of like was on the plane and traveling. Um just the fact that, you know, he I don't know, the fact that he has all these skills and really does seem the most capable out of everyone so far, I think that just makes his character really interesting. So I'm I'm really sort of looking forward to seeing what happens to him in the future, if it's either, you know, good, bad, or if, you know, maybe he doesn't make it, and that sort of hurts the whole group overall. Yeah, like, I suppose straight away you kind of see that, like, the perfect two leaders for the group are, like, to have, like, uh, Jack as a doctor back at the beach, and, like, Saeed is more the leader going out exploring and stuff like that. You you can sort of see where they, you can create these kind of perfect kind of groups, but obviously, like, it doesn't work out so well because some of the characters maybe don't want Saeed to be the leader because of... Uh, where he's from and stuff like that, but uh, uh, Kelly, what were your thoughts on Saeed? Um, yeah, Saeed is actually one of my favorite characters so far. Um, I just really like the way that they um, handled his and Hurley's... I, I really liked Hurley's and his conversation. I thought it was a very uh, genuine like conversation that anybody would have, and I like how helpful he's trying to be despite all of them doubting him. Well, not all of them, but especially Hurley um, doubting him. But, like, the, the potential doubt that they have. I actually didn't expect them to play this card in the show. Like, you're, you're right, this was three years after 9-11, and it's one of those things where um, the fa- as soon as they were fighting and as that guy started talking, the whatever, that the, the guy everybody hates, um, I, say, I was like, oh, they're going to play that card. You know what I mean? Like, they're actually going to bring that up. You know, And I guess that makes it even more so realistic. They're not going to ignore that. You know what I mean? I just didn't expect that to be an element in the show, but I'm actually happy it is, because this guy is like the nicest one out of most of them. He seems the most normal out of most of them, but he's going to have to fight against that prejudice. You know what I mean? So it's going to be interesting to see what happens to him, whether it's um, whether he makes it, like, like like Greg said, whether he makes it or not and what that actually will do to the group. Maybe something will, maybe a dispute will happen between that guy and him again and things will go sour. I don't know, but um, yeah, he's, he's cool so far. I hope he sticks around for some strange reason. I'm worried for his, for his life. Yeah, and uh, with him, obviously, the backstory is focused on his time as a soldier during the war and what that uh, does to his character and stuff like that. So that's some of the flashbacks you get with him. Um, uh, but, uh, Troy, what were your thoughts on Saeed? Yeah, he's definitely a good versus bad character, how he's, like, on this side that uh, most of the audience would consider to be bad, but yet he's a nice guy. Is kind of just, like, that sense of realism to it. Um, but, yeah, I, I hope they... Um, do something with him that's fair to what like has been set up with him. Uh, and he definitely is interesting, and um, yeah. And I wonder if he like regrets what he did during the Gulf War. If he like doesn't quite regret it or something, would be interesting to explore. 
Uh, next up uh, on the side was fighting with Sawyer, but uh, we'll actually uh, talk about him. Sawyer's, of, uh, I'll just say it right now, not his actual name. I won't say what his actual name is. It's not a spoiler or anything like that, but they're going to call him, he's going to introduce himself as Sawyer when he does, so I'll just keep calling him that. Um, so yeah, we get this sarcastic, antagonistic guy, and obviously like uh, very eager to just cause chaos with the rest of them. But you see a hint at this kind of painful aspect of his character when he's reading that letter I mentioned before and obviously it's he reads that letter and then after reading it he then decides he sees everyone going off on the hike and decides to go with them so like it's an important thing and like uh, how before he'd kind of like separated himself from the group being so antagonistic to everyone but then reads the letter decides to kind of join in be a bit more helpful but he's still still himself and annoying everyone and uh, yeah he's the one who finds the gun and uses it kills a polar bear uh, and uh, he also seems to like Kate but uh, she doesn't seem to like him that much and uh, the others are kind of very wary of this guy he's kind of like our almost our villain but like the show doesn't really have a villain at least early on uh, but he's the most kind of like villainous of all the characters but uh, Greg what were your thoughts on Sawyer? Um, yeah, he was, he was, uh, I don't know, he was odd. I mean, he's, he seems, I guess like he says, um, he's like a very, like a sort of, uh, I guess a complicated guy, which you definitely can sort of get from, you know, his early accusi- accusations of Saeed and how he sort of doesn't want to go with the group, but then does go with the group. Um, I don't know, it'll be, I don't know, he's, he seems really odd to me, just how they're sort of like working him in sort of the group, and he does, he definitely doesn't seem like one of the main people, but he's definitely trying to sort of, you know, help the group in his sort of own, like, sort of, I guess, rough and tough way, I mean, the fact that he did sort of find a gun, and he does sort of shoot the polar bear, um, just, you know, straight up, it, it definitely proves that he definitely does have some sort of, like, strengths, um, which will be interesting, I guess, to see how that sort of works with the whole group dynamic, but everyone definitely seems very sort of, uh, wary of him and I don't know I just think that that'll be sort of uh, interesting how this sort of plays out as uh, the season goes on later on so I don't know it'll be interesting to sort of get his backstory and especially since I guess Sawyer isn't his real name like I didn't even really consider him not giving sort of his real name but I can sort of see why he might actually do that now that you said that mm-hmm. uh, Troy what are your thoughts on Sawyer? Yeah, he definitely is a character that you don't trust, but you don't want to just, like, hate him, because he has some good points at some points, like, about, um, why can't we test the radio here? Like, why do we need to test it up there? So, I mean, you don't want to discredit him, but at the same time, he seems like a bad guy. Uh, he just seems like that. Um, so it'll be interesting how we all thought that he was, like, the prisoner and stuff, or at least, well, I was watching, I was like, you know... This guy has a gun. Like, you don't trust people with guns when they're the only ones with a gun. <laughs> um, but, yeah, he took it from the Marshal, which made sense. Um, so he definitely was, like, um, something that's definitely going to be interesting to see. Another good versus bad character to see which way he goes. Yeah. I suppose just the fact that he knows how to use a gun is pretty interesting. Like, he again, capable to use a gun if that ever needs to come up. But, uh... Kelly, what are your thoughts on Sawyer? Uh, yeah, he's... I, I don't like him, I personally, but <laughs> I have a feeling... I have a feeling this is going to be one of those shows that purposely makes you want to hate a character or dislike a character or not trust them, but then, lo and behold, oh, look, something new about them in which now we can understand them and we like them. And then maybe yeah. one of the characters that we do mm-hmm. like, like good characters... Um, are going to do something stupid that will jeopardize the group and possibly get someone killed by accident or maybe on purpose. They go nuts. Who knows? So I have a feeling they're going to be... I, I'm not looking at anybody knowing what they're going to be because I'm like, oh boy, something's going to happen to change this up. You know, we, it's only two episodes in. We're going to probably find out a lot. Like, like for instance, uh, what's his name? Uh, I always forget the character's names. Rock, rock band guy, heroin addict guy. Charlie. Charlie. He may be a good person, but I have a feeling he's going to make a huge mistake very soon. So he just he just seems like that kind of character that's going to do something wrong. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I'm interested. To, but with this guy, Sawyer, um, it is interesting that he has a gun. It is interesting he's the most aggressive out of the groups, um, which is why I'm thinking there's going to be a big issue there. Um, they're gonna, there's going to be some big fight that's going to lead to even more problems than we already had. But mm, he might do something good. I don't know. I, to me, I'm not really invested in him. He's just kind of the jerk. Yeah. Yep, and seems to be 
seems to just have a little bit of a rivalry, I suppose, with Jack, just with, as Greg mentioned earlier on, he's the one who says to Jack, you know, you keep trying to be the hero, I'll just do my own thing, so that was interesting. Uh, only two more characters left. Uh, first up, I suppose, we'll go with uh, Hurley. Uh, uh, again, not his real name, it's just a nickname. Uh, if you think that's a mystery, uh, it's a mystery never answered in the show. You never find out why... His real name is Hugo Reyes, but you never find out at all in the series why his name is Hurley, uh, which is pretty interesting. But yeah, he's our kind of like, a, I suppose, kindest member of the group, uh, our kind of more humorous character, tries to be really helpful and friendly to Saeed and stuff like that after the uh, um, after the whole fight. And um, yeah, he, he gives Claire food, gives her extra food because she's pregnant later on and uh, tries to help Jack. So yeah, he's just kind of helpful uh Involved in the big action set piece at the start a lot as well, um, and yeah, just one of the most kind of uh, good-natured characters, I suppose, on the show. But uh, Kelly, what were your thoughts on uh, Hurley? I really liked him. Um, he was very kind, and um, my favorite, probably one of my favorite scenes in these two pilot episodes, is when he goes to sit down next to um, the pregnant woman, um, and he really doesn't kind of know what to do, but gives her the food. And then, like as he walks off, he goes back and gives her another plate of food for the yeah. baby. And I, th- I, th- I loved that. I thought that was very, yeah. I thought that was very good. And it's one of those things where, if you think about it, um, if you think about it, it's. Um, well, no, it was very nice thing to do, but it's like, how much food did they have, you know? So it's it's kind of one of those things where I feel like that was kind of a sign as well, where kindness isn't necessarily going to equal to survival. You know what I mean? Like, here's the thing. He's really nice, and he wants to help everybody. But in these kind of scenarios, I don't think he will be able to help everybody. And I feel like it's going to be one of those things where he's going to have to make tough choices or he's going to have to make a big mistake. I, I, I'm kind of keeping an eye open because he may be a really cool, nice person, but at the same time, I feel like he's going to also probably make a mistake. But that's just kind of how I'm viewing all these characters. They all have potential to be something that they're not. Hence Evangeline Lily, hence Kate. She has the potential to be um, a fugitive, even though we thought she was a really cool, nice person. So I'm keeping my eyes open, even on Hurley. Yeah, but Hurley, I'd say has probably the the most oddest kind of like quirky kind of a uh, backstory kind of uh, things about him like when you actually see like why he's on the plane and like the whole issues he was having in his life beforehand it's it's so it fits perfectly in with his character but it's also kind of like tragic in its own way it's, it's really unique and like uh, if you guys if you continue to watch the show I'd love to hear your reactions to just uh, Hurley's whole uh, thing but uh, yeah just a uh, Kelly kind of hit the nail on the head there with the whole food thing. He's being really nice, but how much food do they have left on the plane after it's crashed? Where are they going to get food from when it runs out? And they, as we find out in the episodes, they're a thousand miles off course. They're not going to be found anytime soon, and that's a key point going forward. And not really much of a spoiler, but uh, the, the group basically puts Hurley kind of in charge of uh, doling out food to everyone and stuff like that. And obviously, he struggles with that a bit, um, but. Uh, Greg, what were your thoughts on Hurley? Um, I liked him. He was, you know, he was like sort of, I guess, the the default nice guy character of the group. Um, but I think it worked really well. I think they did his character pretty interesting. Like he he definitely just wants to sort of help everyone in the group, and you can see how you know he's definitely, I guess, looking on the positive sides of things, even though they're in sort of like a a dire situation. But he his niceness towards everyone in the group definitely makes him sort of like a character that you can sort of uh, really like can really associate with, which for me always makes me think that he's sort of not going to survive the group, just because, you know, they're making him seem, like, so nice, and you know, nice guys usually don't survive because something usually happens to him, but I don't know, it's, it's just really, he's just a really, like, sort of good character to sort of, I guess, had have in the group and him, you know, sort of doling up the food, I think that'll be interesting to see how sort of he handles actually having some sort of, I guess, real responsibility since, you know, the one time we did see him sort of fail was when he was sort of helping Jack with the marshal and he sort of like passed out um, after seeing the blood. So he seems like he could possibly be like really capable, but he definitely has, you know, some flaws that aren't really, you know, positive towards uh, their situation that they're in. So, I don't know, it'll it'll just be really cool to see what happens to him. And, uh, Troy, what are your thoughts on Hurley? Yeah, he seems like a really nice guy, and he's kind of like the funny character. Him and um, the guy who was looking for the pens. I, without them, this would be very dry in humor. So, it definitely was um, funny with him, and 
Yeah, he definitely is squeamish and stuff, but he, he also was nice, and that's interesting, him passing out food. And, like, I'd imagine, like, once the food from the airplane, like, goes out, that they'll, you know, food is going to become a rare thing. So whoever passes out the food, you really need to trust. And it's just interesting that, yeah, he seems like the guy you'd be perfectly fine with doing that because, like, he gave extra food because the woman was pregnant and stuff like that, which makes perfect sense. And, uh, yeah, last but not least, our last uh, character who gets any sort of focus in season one, at least, is uh, Claire, who is our uh, kind of pregnant woman, and she real she's eight months pregnant, so uh, I think it's pretty obvious she, she gets uh, gives birth on the island. But I don't think that's even a spoiler at this stage. Um, and, yeah, the, the, her thing is that uh, she says early on in the episode that she hasn't heard her baby kick since the plane crash, and then she only hears it kick once again when Jean gives her the kind of uh, friendly fish thing, and then she gets super excited. And, uh, in the scene where she talks to Shannon uh, earlier on in the episode, uh, uh, she mentions that she doesn't know if it's a boy or a girl, but then when she hears it kick, she kind of uh, sort of knows off by heart just that it is a boy, and um, uh, she kind of is like, oh. I guess I think you're a boy, and that's kind of pretty important as well. But uh, yeah, you don't get probably the least you get on any of the kind of main characters in this episode. But uh, just the fact that she's pregnant makes her like, oh, there's a kid on the island, and there's also a pregnant lady on the island. Uh, Greg, what were your thoughts on uh, Claire? Um, yeah, I thought that was interesting that they have sort of a, a pregnant woman on the plane. I mean, that seems sort of like like a, a common trope that we that they would have sort of in this situation and just bring back the, the avatar that also happened in the original series. So that'll definitely add sort of a interesting sort of dynamic to, to the whole group, and especially when she gives birth, like that could either be like a really good moment or a really sort of a, a dire moment considering everything that's going on and how they're going to sort of have to provide for that baby. And when they don't really have, you know, that many resources, it's just, you know, technically it's just, you know, a new mouth to feed that they really can't, you know, sort of provide for overall. So that'll definitely be really interesting. But, um, yeah, she's just, uh, I don't know, she seems like she could possibly be an interesting character, mainly because of her baby, but it is interesting that sort of they had one of the huge, you know, action set pieces with her and Hurley and Jack in the beginning of the, the pilot, so they're definitely using her to uh, a good, uh, in a good way. Yep, and then uh, I suppose the other thing is that, like, they, they don't mention at all if she has, like, a boyfriend or a husband or anything like that, so... They don't, they don't say anything with regards to that um, So in these first two episodes, but uh, that's definitely like a, a key part in her kind of backstory. But uh, Troy, what were your thoughts on Claire? Yeah, I thought it was interesting, too, how they didn't mention like how exactly she got pregnant. I mean, she seems like it was intentional and stuff, and I just kind of assumed she was like going to see her husband or something, like maybe before the baby got born or it was too late to travel. So I don't know. Um but, uh, yeah, and that is interesting, like, once the baby's born on the island, which I guess we're all assuming will happen because it's six seasons long and she's eight months pregnant, but that'll be interesting, just, like, having a baby on the island, like, that, I don't think that'll be the end of her story, I mean, she'll have this whole new role as a mother on the island, which would be interesting. Yeah, and that's another thing, she's a fairly young character, I can't remember her specific age in the show, but she's she's fairly young as well, so that uh, her becoming a mother is definitely an kind of interesting thing as well. But uh, Kelly, what are your thoughts on Claire? Um, I like her. I mean, the fact that she's pregnant is kind of the only thing that makes her interesting, but I like her. I really don't have too much to say about her other than her baby. Like, how is the baby going to survive all this? I mean, I, I, mean, I hate to be gruesome about it, but it's like... Um, it's going to be difficult. It's definitely, um, well, I don't even know if she survives her pregnancy. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, because the, the scenario that they're in. So, yeah, I'm interested to see how that goes. Clearly, it's going to happen soon. <laughs> Very soon. Um, eight months, you know. Uh, but, um, yeah, yeah, I, I felt it. You know what it is? The one thing that kind of, um, that bothered me, but something that kind of stood out to me as more generic was, like, her mentioning that, the, that she couldn't feel the baby move. And then... I was a little worried. And it's kind of like unnecessarily created drama. Mm -hmm. And then like, oh, look, the baby's moving. It's alive. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like it was kind of like a line that they just put in there just for us to feel drama later, like to make us feel tense about it. But that, that to me, that just kind of stood out, but it's nothing crazy. Um, 
I really don't know what you mean by, like, the fact that she thinks it's a boy is actually a sign of something. Like, how many little things apparently are answered? I mean, the fact that she thinks <laughs> it's a boy is a sign for something? Like, that's just, that's, that's weird to me. <laughs> so, it's, it, I mean, I'm interested in these mysteries, but how far can you go with these mysteries in which yeah. your speculation of your baby's sex is apparently a mystery <laughs> uh, it, it, it's hard to kind of fully explain it without kind of spoiling stuff but it's uh it's just that the show kind of explores themes like the destiny and stuff like that and like the the, the, the show kind of you, you'll see in the first kind of claire episode that's kind of made out to be a big deal that like her child is meant to be like special important or stuff like and stuff like that and uh just her th- thinking it's a boy and stuff like that is important and stuff like that and how she comes up with the name for the the kid and stuff like that is of, of in, is interesting um definitely the way they do her flashbacks and kind of stuff explored in it is like interesting it's like weird like hurley's kind of backstory stuff but it's uh definitely interesting kind of not what you'd fully expect i suppose from her backstory it, it, it's interesting definitely but uh, yeah. they're all our kind of main characters overall um, and yeah they get various amounts of episodes over the course of the seasons and um, obviously uh, the, the likes of uh, Jack uh, Kate Sawyer and John Locke get more episodes than say oh uh, one character we forgot to mention was uh, Rose uh, but to get more episodes than say she or Claire and stuff like that uh, but yeah and then Rose is probably even more so than Claire, the character who gets the least amount of time. She was the person sitting beside Jack on the plane. She said her husband was in the bathroom when the uh, kind of uh, plane went down and stuff like that. And then we just see her on the island. Uh, Jack saves her with the uh, uh, <laughs> saves her from Boone basically in the, in the opening scene uh, and stuff like that. Not really much to say on her. Just that uh, the start of the next episode touches more on what she's going through. But, I suppose, Greg, do you have any thoughts on Rose? Um, not too much. I mean, it seemed like they were possibly going to do something with her and Jack just because they were sitting next to each other and he sort of was attempting to sort of calm her down and he is, you know, kind of the one that sort of like saves her, um, I guess from Boone, as you said, um, when they're on the beach finally. So I don't know. It didn't seem like he sort of like recognized her from the plane or I don't know if he gave sort of some acknowledgement to the fact that he was just talking to her before, you know, the plane went down. Um, so I don't know if they're going to sort of play that up, but there's not, you can't really tell too much about her. It just seems like that she's really in shock about everything that's going on, which I don't know, that could be something interesting later on, but right now there's not too much to go um, on with Rose. Yeah, Kelly, any thoughts on uh, Rose? Um, I forgot about her. I only remembered her from the flashback of um, Jack's flashback, and I figured if she was in his flashback that she would actually have more of an important role, But um, because, you know, Jack's the main character. Um, but I guess not. I don't know. I remember this one part where she, like, kissed her ring... I don't I, like. It seemed like a very dramatic moment for her. So you mentioned her husband was on the plane. I'm assuming he died. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'll figure that out later, I guess. Yep. Uh, all I'll say is just that it's. Uh, they made a specific note that the plane uh, split into three, and like they they were obviously all the all, our main survivors are the middle part of the plane. They find the front of the plane. Where's the back part of the plane? Um, I won't say anything more than that, but uh, Troy, uh, any thoughts on Rose? Um, Troy, your thoughts on Rose? Yeah, sorry, I was having trouble um, unmuting, but um, yeah, no, I barely remember her too, just kind of that she sat with Jack. And, so it'll be interesting that they have this character that like we haven't gotten too much on, but you know we obviously know her name and stuff, so what exactly they'll do with that will be interesting. Will she just kind of, like, be one of the other 48, or will she actually ever step up into a role of another one just because we know her name? Yeah, she, she kind of ends up being the, I suppose the, the most minor of the actual characters that are explored. Like, she probably has, over the course of the series, the least amount of episodes devoted to her, but uh, still, she, she plays a role, I suppose. Um, her unique thing is obviously that she's the one character... Uh, who is actually, at this moment in time, dealing with the fact that she lost someone close to her on the plane, while, like, most of the other characters are together, like, Sun and Jin are still alive, uh, Shannon and Boone are still alive, and so on, while she's actually dealing with what she thinks is potentially her 
husband killed and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, there are characters. Um, I suppose uh, one other talking point I'll just bring up is just that the the actual opening scene is actually pretty interesting as well. Just in that it's their, it's their key action moment, even more so than some of the like hiking scenes. In just that it's uh, this is. I think up, up until fairly recently, the the pilot for Lost was the most expensive pilot ever made, uh, as you can probably tell because they just basically bought a plane and like cut it up to make this stuff. Uh, and yeah, crazy set pay, set piece action scene at the start with parts of the plane still active and stuff like that. The one of the turbines still active and someone gets sucked in, explosions, things falling all over the place. Uh, and it, I, I thought it was just a really cool way to open the kind of show that it starts off really slow, just Jack in the jungle wakes up, focusing on his eye wakes up, you don't really hear anything and then he walks onto the beach, turns around and there's just chaos everywhere um, so Greg, what were your thoughts on that, that opening scene with the big action scene? Um, I thought it was pretty good like the way that it was so like you know, it really gives you know large importance to the fact that you know this whole plane sort of crashed, and there's all these people that are sort of you know surviving through like the wreckage, and you know some people are running around crazy, some people are just sort of screaming, some people look like they're attempting to help other people, um, and you sort of see it from sort of Jack's perspective and how he's sort of you know he doesn't even really know sort of like what to make of everything, but you know I guess after you know he counts to five or whatever, he sort of gets him to like you know doctor super super help mode um which is pretty interesting and the fact that you sort of see like i guess little clips of all the other people especially some of the other main characters you can thinking back you can sort of see their like initial reactions to the plane crashing and how that sort of i guess sort of shapes their personality later on i think um shannon she was just sort of just like screaming on the beach so definitely can see how she was you know reacting to this sort of situation and then it, it's just a really sort of like massive, you know, I guess, you know, set piece. I mean, the fact that the engine's still going on. And of course, when you see an engine going on, like, you know, someone's going to get sort of sucked into it. So <laughs> there weren't that many sort of like surprises. Like, you didn't know certain things were going to happen. Like, when Jack like stares at the, the overhanging piece of the, the sh- of the plane that's going to like, that's tipping down, like, you can tell like that's going to crash on someone. Like, there's no way that's not going to have some importance. But, um, it's not like too overbearing that it makes it like annoying that you're going to sort of, you can tell what it is, but it definitely was done in a, a good way. I really think it was a pretty nice way of opening the episode. It definitely gets you interested in this show right off the bat, which you no know, pilot's supposed to do, otherwise they won't be able to make more episodes. So it did its job pretty well, I think. Yeah, I kind of like that they teased that Charlie was going to be the one to get sucked into the turbine at first, because he was just wandering around, like, all dazed, and then he, he walks past it, and it's a, another random guy who just gets sucked in. But, uh, Troy, what were your thoughts on the big opening scene? I definitely felt like it was a very big scene, and it definitely got across how sad it was, Like, but it kind of hit on other points we knew from like other stories about how sad things like this were, so it kind of just reminded us of that without needing to spend like episodes on it, which worked well. My complaint is just kind of like, this is later on when they we get the first flashbacks of the plane getting ripped in half and stuff with Kate's flashback. It's it just kind of weird how like the people went flying all of a sudden, like like in zero gravity they just like like got lifted up like really weirdly um i felt that was strange but no the emotions behind it were really there mm-hmm. yeah no, that just is all about the question about what crashed the plane and stuff like that which is a uh, super interesting answer when it comes but uh kelly what were your thoughts on the big opening scene um, honestly, this opening scene is what kind of gripped me to stay watching the show. I was like, oh, is this show going to go? And then, like, I, the way that they filmed it, I think, is what was great about it. Um, definitely, um, yeah, I could, this is totally the most expensive file. It looks like a movie set. Like, it, I'm not even kidding. Like, I mean, it felt kind of set up, but also, like, but it just was amazingly shot and amazingly executed and very tense moment like all these different things happening at once and i think the only thing i didn't like about the opening was there was this one part that was really like dramatic where um hurley and the pregnant lady um are running away from the wing falling and the wing just explodes and i'm like would the, would the wing really explode if it falls like that, that's the thing i didn't quite under, it, it I, I guess but like i didn't to me, I don't know. To me, it felt like such a set explosion. Like run! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really. It was. It didn't resonate to me as much as like other things. I don't know. Something about it didn't feel quite as 
yeah. you know, real. But I mean, the actual, of course, it looked expensive. It looked great. And I think that's honestly one of my favorite things about what I like about the show is it's just beautifully shot. It's beautifully well, like, paced and executed. Um, with that, especially with that opening scene, just the, all the things they managed to cover so quickly without being over chaotic was really, really good. Yep. And yeah, the show just in general is like really looks great. It's, uh, I think, new, except for like a couple of scenes, I think in season one, everything is filmed in Hawaii somewhere, whether it's the jungles, the beach, uh, some of the other kind of flashback scenes where you just see them walking around like a town or something like that. It's somewhere in Hawaii. Um, so uh, yeah, that's pretty important. But uh, yeah, I suppose uh, we'll have a final uh, run around of uh, topics before we kind of end this. But uh, Gre- I suppose Greg, do you have another talking point? Um, yeah, I guess I have a talking point. It's not necessarily about the show specifically, but I guess more ge- I guess um, about like sort of the actors in this show and just how after watching this, you know, these two pilots, I've. You know, I notice a lot of these, you know, actors and like a lot of other things like Daniel Day Kim. I mean, he's, you know, of course, in, you know, Avatar. So we've seen him, but I've seen him in sort of like, you know, Hawaii Five-0 as well as, you know, the character, the actor that plays Harley and a couple of the other characters like Evangelina Lily. Like we've seen her in a whole bunch of like movies and stuff now. I guess just, you know, noting how, I guess, far these actors have progressed after this show, which, you know, may have been sort of like their launching platform into their careers. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just with a lot of the actors, uh, definitely they found a lot of success afterwards. Some more than others, but uh, just definitely like the, the show in general, like it's a really great uh, quality in terms of acting and stuff like that. Like, um, like, like as I said, M- Maggie Grace, the, the character who plays Shannon, like has been in like Taken, the, the three Taken movies, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, obviously, Evangeline Lilly in the uh, Lord of the Rings, and I think did she, I don't know, she was nominated or won an Oscar for a movie a few years ago. Uh, I'm not really sure about that, but um, yeah, the, a lot of them found huge success uh, after this. It was it was really popular, and uh, it won a lot of awards for its acting and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, definitely got uh, what all the credits it was worth. Uh, but uh, Kelly, what were your thoughts on uh, the the actors? I suppose um, have you seen them in anything since uh, like um. 2010? Surprisingly, no. I mean, I knew Evangeline Lilly was Tariel. Um, well, now I did. I, you mentioned it before. I was like, oh, this was her first role. Like, I didn't know this was Evangeline Lilly's first role and that she was mainly known for this show. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I recognize uh, Dan- well, Daniel Kimpacore and stuff. Um, um, the, the, the band guy plays Pippin, right? From The Hobbit. Uh, the Lord, I mean, The Hobbit. The Lord of the Rings Mary. or the other one. Mary. Mary. Yeah. They, they look the same to me. Yeah. I know they weren't. Nice. <laughs> um, Mary, right? Um, I haven't seen those movies in a while either. Um, <clears throat> so that's cool. I didn't know he was on this. Um, and uh, you know what's funny? Um, the dad, Michael, or mm-hmm. Michael and Waltz, is that it? Yeah. I was watching this show, and I was like, where have I seen this guy before? Like, it was, it was getting me, like, angry. Like, I had no yeah. idea who this guy was. <laughs> um, when I was at New York Comic Con, when I went to go wait for the Doctor Who, um, the Doctor Who special screencasting of the show for the new episode, um, they showed a show called Constantine before it, and he's one of the main characters on that show. He's, like, the main character, well, not the main character, but, like, the second main character on Constantine. So he's still doing stuff, too. But it was weird because he played, like, the devil. <laughs> so it, Or something like that. Like, he, it was, like, a really strange role. So I've seen him in that. Um, he was good in that, for the most part. Um, and uh, I haven't really, no, I don't really recognize anyone else. I can't say I do. Uh, I don't watch enough live-action stuff. Yeah to recognize anybody else maybe maybe i'll be like oh that guy was that guy all right but for the most part no i don't know anybody mm-hmm. what about you troy do you recognize any of these actors i i didn't recognize any of them but as far as the acting goes i thought it was pretty um all right like you definitely got some of their emotions um but none of it was like too complex or like something that we we're kind of used to seeing in the stuff we've reviewed on the podcast so um, it was all right acting, you know. I wouldn't ask for anything more, but uh, it was fine. Yeah, it's, it's just like introductions to most of the characters. There's there's no massively emotional scenes just yet. It's just kind of like solidly done opening. Uh, but uh, Kelly, do you have a, another talking point? Um, it's not. To be honest, not really. I guess I just want to bring up a point that I was going to mention before. I mentioned like the characters, all the characters before. I guess I was just going to bring up that what my favorite aspect of the show so far is how interesting they can keep it going with the really good pacing of of 
focusing on the characters. Like, this isn't really a point. We kind of already talked about all the characters already. My point, though, is how well they balance all the different characters with the amount of time that they have. Like, I feel like we, we know at least something, or at least a little something about every single, sur- well, uh, all the survivors that they're focusing on. Um, I really like the way that they're handling it, and they're making it very enjoyable while not boring us. Like, oh, who's this guy? Oh, we're focusing on this guy again? Whatever's going on is always something kind of interesting. So... I guess that's just a positive mark I wanted to make. Yeah, and, and you'll definitely see that as like as, as episodes go on, you know, like uh, the the kind of survivors form like little groups and they kind of like each have their own kind of plot going on, and so you know when rather than like the island stuff of a particular character's episode just focusing on that character, you kind of get like the character on the island plus who they're around and stuff like that. So yeah, overall, I'd say that's something that kind of continues throughout the, the whole season, pretty much. Uh, most of the characters get a decent amount of time um, and stuff like that. But yes, yeah, some of them still do remain kind of more uh, minor than others, as I said. Um, Rose, uh, to some extent, uh, Claire a little bit are kind of the more minor of all of the characters, but still they, they, they get a decent amount for the most part. But um, I suppose, uh, Troy, what are your thoughts on that point? Uh, how do you think they managed having... I suppose introducing so many kind of characters who are technically main characters uh, in just two episodes, and how, how do you think they, it'll do going forward? Um, I mean, it was it was pretty nicely fast paced. It definitely got me into it without blowing me. Um, but yeah, I, I think going forward, I kind of just maybe want to slow down episode, not so much because I felt like even with this fast pace, we got plenty of character development, but just a slowed down episode to give the plot time to breathe. Um, just so we can kind of like get into more juicy plot without it like ever feeling like oh it's getting like too crazy. Mm. Yeah, it, that 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 definitely kind of just happens when you start just focusing on okay, this is just one character's flashback. The episode is going to be more kind of tightly based around this character rather than the two for opening two episodes just being we have to introduce everyone and start it off and do everything. But uh, Greg, what are your thoughts on how they handled having so many characters to introduce? Um, overall, I thought it was done pretty well. I mean, it didn't seem at any point where it was too, like, too much for me. Um, I mean, I guess maybe a couple of where they sort of finally, like, we find out, like, some of the characters' names, like, that sort of seemed, like, I guess maybe a bit cheesy. I had to sort of, like, break it down. I was like, my name is Jack, or my name is Kate. Maybe that was a bit of a uh, annoying thing that I noticed, but overall, I liked how they sort of just, you know, didn't have too many characters introduced at one point of time in the episode that is sort of, like, overwhelmed you, and you couldn't, like, remember their names. Um, so I thought that was done pretty well, and if they do start focusing on, you know, more of one character or two characters per episode, so that definitely will help sort of like space it out so that we get to know the characters um, a bit better. So I think overall it was done really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I suppose, uh, Troy, do you have a final talking point? No, I'm all out. Okay. So, yeah, um, that, that's basically the end of our discussion for the most part. Um, so, yeah, I, I suppose I'll just... Uh, We'll end it with just a final little bit. Uh, I suppose, do you guys have anything, I suppose, any questions you want to ask me, I suppose, having seen the whole show that, like, uh, I suppose is important to you in terms of, like, making up your mind if you want to actually, like, watch the show going forward? I suppose that's what, what this section is kind of more about. Is there anything, like, uh, you want my kind of, like, knowledge of future stuff about, to know about going forward, uh, Greg? Um, hmm, I mean... From what we've discussed so far, there's nothing that's really, like, holding me back from really watching more of the episodes. Um, I guess I would be interested in just more of the of the, the aspects of the just the crash in general and how that's sort of going to play out into the episode, if that's going to be, like, really important or if that's, you know, only sort of a minor thing to, like, the whole, like, major mystery of the, the island in general. But other than that, probably not much else that I can really think of. Yeah, the, the how the plane crashed itself, the way it's explored, um, it's not it's not like the, the a bunch of the characters just decide to figure out like how the plane crashed. It's kind of like they just kind of come across how it happened, and like it's just kind of revealed, and you, you kind of put it together like, oh, this happened, so that must have led to this happening, and so on. And it, 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 you see hints about uh, where the explanation starts to come from later on in the season it's uh, it's really interesting it's a show I'm 
this the show in general, I'm, I'm kind of very careful about not going crazy with spoilers, just because some of these reveals are so, I suppose, important. Like there's there's so many kind of moments where you're just like that's really cool to happen. So it, it's definitely something that gets answered, um, and yeah. you're not left waiting too long. Like it's it, it's resolved when I think within the first two seasons, what how the plane went down. Uh, so that's that. Uh, but but uh, I suppose Kelly, do you have any questions you want to ask me? As someone who's seen the whole show. Uh, not really, to be honest. Uh, I don't want to have anything accidentally spoiled for me. And uh, I mean, uh, if I can ask a stupid one, it would be: Do we ever get subtitles on the Korean family? <laughs> um, on the, on the uh, Korean um, two Korean characters, or no? Because I'm just curious if we just never understand what they say the whole show. Uh, no, uh, basically any scene that just involves those two talking to each other, you do get the subtitles. Like in flashbacks, you get the they obviously talk to each other in Korean. They uh, you get uh, subtitles there. When they talk to each other huh. on the island, you get subtitles. And from time to time, when they talk to other characters, you get subtitles. It, it's it just it, depends. Yeah, like, there's okay. a few reveals that come about that kind of like change that a bit. But uh, for the most part, yeah, you, can, you, get, you get subtitles. Yeah. 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 And uh, Troy, do you have any questions you want to ask? Um, well, this you said it's very critically acclaimed. Do you think it's overrated or underrated? Um, hmm. I'd say it's a, it's a little bit of both. I think a, a lot. There's the show got a lot of criticism for the way it ended, like it, the way season six ended and how it ended off the whole show, like resolving stuff like that. I think that that's kind of overblown, like how bad that was. Uh, I personally have no problem with the ending. Um, but for the most part, I'd, I'd say overall that the show, it deserves most of the praise that it gets. I think it is a really well written. I think it is one of the best TV shows of all time. Uh, I'd struggle to say it's the best, just because I haven't seen that many live action TV shows, but um, I could tell just by watching all of these episodes that it is, this is just a, a really well done show. Uh, and so and it ends up kind of being, I suppose, a little bit overrated just because you guys have all heard about it, even though you haven't seen an episode beforehand. But uh, I suppose most of what you've heard beforehand was kind of just like, it's mysterious, it's a bit kind of like crazy and stuff like that. Um, but uh, overall, I, I think just from what like you guys have talked about, uh, having just seen the first two episodes, you guys seem to, like, for the most part, like think it's a good show. Like I suppose that's a t- talking point in itself. Um, I suppose, Troy, yourself, just from watching the two episodes, you know, do you think this eventually goes on to become, like, a kind of top ten TV show of all time? Can you see the potential in the way it starts here? No, I can see the potential. Um, And I think there's a good chance it will happen, but I'm not, like, 100% sure that it will be on my top ten list if I would have watched the whole thing. Mm, and, uh, what about you, Kelly, on that? Just, uh, did you see, I suppose, the why people say this is one of the best shows of all time just from the first two episodes? Um, yes, I can see that. Um, best show of all time? That's crazy, but I mean, from just that opening scene alone, I can see why people make it at least a big deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just from that opening sequence and all the crazy mysteries in general. Um, but yeah, I could see the hype. Um, I'm definitely curious about this ending, the supposed horrible ending. I don't know if, yeah. I mean... I think it maybe it'll really just yeah. depend on the person, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna do the best I can to avoid spoilers on that ending, despite yeah. already kind of knowing it, or at least the joke of it. Um, so I, I don't even know what exactly is gonna happen, but uh, no, I really like the show. I could see why uh, it's a big deal. I uh, I'm not like in love with it right now, but I, I enjoy it a lot, and it's definitely something that is probably gonna get better as I watch it. And uh, what about you, Greg? Do you see the the potential for this to become one of the best shows uh, of all time, as many say. Um, I mean, I can sort of see it. I can't give it like full credit just from these first two episodes, mm-hmm. but I definitely can see sort of the hype around it and why you know people are really so like invested in in it. Um, I mean, if you really like these sort of like characters and um, the show is as character focused as you've been saying, I can see why people would like it just because you know like their favorite character is X and you know he does you know whatever whatever in such and such episodes or over the course of a season. I can see people like really would like it and why people would really get like invested in it like the whole thing about like podcasts like sort of breaking this down and that sort of like pushing that whole like concept more like i can definitely see why especially with this being sort of like six seasons like i definitely 
definitely can see people getting like really, really, really invested in it. So I can definitely see why it was uh, so popular when it was airing. Yep. So yeah, uh, next we'll move on to just uh, basically one of the key parts of this podcast, obviously, is that's a recommendation podcast. I recommended Lost to our other three hosts. So we're going to find out right now. Are they actually going to like put it on their to watch list at some point in time? Like, obviously, this isn't like not like if you say yes, you have to watch it immediately. It's just kind of like at some point I probably will. I think this show is good enough to watch more of, basically. So yeah, it's just kind of a no pressure thing. But uh, Greg, uh, are you going to watch more of Lost? Do you, was my recommendation good? Um, yeah, I say your recommendation was good. Um, I definitely will watch more. I actually sort of have already seen sort of more episodes just because other people have been watching it around me. So I definitely will be watching it. Um, I really probably would have already watched some episodes just, but I just sort of wanted to keep my sort of perception of the show to these first two episodes. So I sort of held back on watching more, which I kind of wish I wouldn't. But, but yeah, no, I definitely uh, can see why it was recommended. It's definitely good. I, I will be watching it. I'll what see how we... long it actually takes me to get through it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, 121 episodes. Yeah, it takes a while. But uh, what about you, Kelly? Are you going to watch more? Um, yeah, I definitely am. Um, at right the second? No, yeah. only because um, I can still. definitely see this is going to be... I'm watching other stuff, and I can see that this is going to be an investment. Like, yeah. I'm going to just... I think this summer, I'm just going to, like like I said with Doctor Who, um, <laughs> I'm just going to, like, watch this whole, thro- uh, whole show through the summer. So I'm definitely interested. I'm definitely not going to, like, forget about it. Um, it's on my Netflix to watch list. Um, but um, it's not something I'm going to, like, run and watch, like, right now. Because I'm actually watching another show right now that I'm at season three for, uh, like, midway through season three, that I'm considering recommending either this week or next week. Or, or not next week. What, what my next turn of recommendation <laughs> So I'm going to try to figure that out. Mm-hmm. And uh, Troy, are you going to watch more of Lost? Uh, probably, eventually. I mean, I, I kind of don't like series that are the, as long as Lost just because I feel like they stretch things out. But if you say it like it stays interesting, I'll probably will. I guess my only concern with it is how gory it is, but maybe I can just get used to that. Um, but it is on my two eventually watch list whenever like it. Because it will be an investment. It's not like something I can just sit down, um, like oh, scroll through Netflix and be like, oh, you know, what do I have time to watch around here? No, like I really need to like do it when I have a lot of time available. Mm, yeah, and uh, so overall, yeah, pr- uh, pretty positive here. We've got a, basically a yes from everyone, and. Uh, you know, another part of this podcast is hearing from you listeners. If uh, you kind of joined in with us and watched the two episodes, you know, we definitely be completely up for like uh, reading out like emails and stuff like that for your thoughts on the first two episodes and stuff like that. So, if you want to get involved in like future episodes or this one, just uh, email your thoughts on whatever show to Avatar Online Podcast at gmail dot com. Didn't see the point on making a separate email for just a new podcast when we already have a podcast email. So. That's that. Uh, in terms of uh, like uh, my kind of thoughts on rewatching the show, I would definitely say that Lost is a much better experience when you watch it kind of as a kind of watch it kind of now that it's complete. I, I think a lot of the problems people had with Lost was the fact that watching this show as it aired with like a year break between every season and it went through the writer strike from a few years ago there's a lot of delays you very easily like forgot stuff that happened in previous episodes because there were so many delays unless you were constantly rewatching this show works so much better if you just kind of kind of marathon it a little bit so definitely like the, the best way to watch this is kind of like you know you have no other shows you're really watching at a time and just go through this one as your kind of one main show and uh, I think you definitely get a lot of enjoyment out of it that way and that we also remember a lot of the stuff when it comes to mysteries being resolved which I think is a lot of people's problem with the ending that they kind of forgot stuff that happened beforehand and kind of misinterpreted the ending though at the same time it's kind of like the ending is very clearly stated what the ending is I don't know I don't get why people misinterpret it so wrongly but uh yeah, and then in terms of the future, all I'll say is the next episode is a Kate episode, following that is a Locke episode, following that is a Jack episode, then a Sun and Sun and Jin episode, primarily focused on Sun, and then I think it's Charlie after that, and then I think 
maybe Saeed then. I uh, can't remember exactly, but uh, th- that's in general how things uh, go from here. And season one, I think in general, people will probably say is probably like the best season of Lost. The first two seasons are like exceptional, and season one specifically is amazing, just with some of the cliffhanger endings to episodes, and especially how the season ends. And you, it's it was stuff like that that made being kind of watching it as it aired really crazy like uh, the break between one and two was insane with all the speculation going on so definitely one worth watching going forward but uh yeah that's our discussion on lost um, and and uh, yeah i definitely recommend this show to people I, I recommended it here and just say for sure i would recommend this show to anyone who likes good tv basically and um, if i was to say like um an episode of Lost you have to see early on, I would say, at the, at the very least, watch up until episode four. Watch episode four, walk about, and you know, come back to me and tell me you're not interested in the show. That's all I'd say with that. But uh, yeah, next up, it's time for uh, Kelly, who's uh, up next to choose the show. So uh, I'll turn it over to you, Kelly. What are we going to be uh, reviewing uh, in uh, two weeks' time on episode two? You know, it might actually be a shocker. I'm trying to, uh, and midway through this, um, through the lost talk thing, I was like, oh, what if I want to talk about the show instead? So, so it might not be what you actually expect, but I will get to said show probably the week after. Uh, well, the two, the, the the my next turn of picking a show, but um, I'm actually gonna pick another show instead, and the show is called Chuck. It came out in 2007. It is kind of a spy comedy action show mm-hmm. and I feel like it's a show that as I'm I'm not actually done with it is that a rule so I have to be finished with it and uh, no you just have to have I a, a decent experience it. with it I I'm midway through yeah. season three and there's five seasons mm, yeah that, so I fun, think yeah. yeah um I was very impressed with the show um definitely a unique kind of show in my opinion and I think it'll be exciting it's definitely a show I think that will be very interesting to talk about mm-hmm. because it does a lot of different things with what it has so yeah, that's what we'll be getting to in two weeks' time. Of course, next week we return to an Avatar podcast, and that's going to be the Core Roundtable podcast for Book 4 Balance in Review. So it's going to be a kind of special Core Roundtable show where we review the final book of Korra as a whole. We'll bring up our general thoughts on the final season and stuff like that. So that's next week's show, and of course, this one returns in two weeks' time. That's the general format of our two podcasts that we have now. But uh, yeah, once again, email if to your the email is avataronlinepodcast at gmail dot com, and definitely next week uh, send in your thoughts on Lost uh, if you saw the first two episodes, what your thoughts were on them, or this uh, show that Kelly's recommended, Joke. Uh, send them in, and we can uh, read them out as well and uh, get uh, more people's opinions. But uh, for now, that's been the end of the Movers Podcast, episode one. Thanks for listening, and bye. 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 Bye Bye-bye.